today. Oh, We're good? It's the only thing he won't allow you to do. Yeah, that's right. He said it's my room tonight, didn't he? All right. Good evening, everyone. I would like to welcome you to the New Carlisle City Council work session uh, for uh, November 13, 2019 at 6 p.m. here at the New Carlisle Fire Station. Uh, Mr. Bridge. Yes. Call to order. Yes, sir. All right. Councilman Cobb. Here. Councilman Cook. Here. Uh, Vice Mayor Lindsay. Here. Mayor Lowry. Here. Councilwoman Hopkins. Here. Councilwoman Eagleston. Here. All council members are present. What about Shammy? Uh, with the exception of Mr. Shammy. <laughs> uh, they're not all there. Chris, Mr. Shammy. He's not here. No present. Sorry. I put, put his name down. Uh, all <laughs> present except Councilman Shammy. Thank you, sir. And tonight's invocation will be by Councilman Cook. Please bow your heads. Our, our Heavenly Father, please bless us this evening as we try and do the work we are dedicated to do for this city. Also, please wrap your arms around all of our first responders, particularly the deputies who patrol this city and provide us with our protection. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. There is a fresh pot of coffee, too, ever like any. Oh, do you have a lot of people in house right now, Chief? Yeah, kind of motion to council to move our meetings to here every Monday night. Let's do it. Man, look at that. Coffee, everything. <laughs> <laughs> Only two people in the station right now. Okay. All right. Actions on the minute. None. Communications. City manager's report. Uh, any comments from members of the public before we get moved? Mr. Grimm. Sorry. The capital improvement plan. Didn't we just do this a couple months ago? A month or two ago? Mm -hmm. Now we amended it for, uh, the, for, if that's what you're thinking of, amended it for the uh, uh, trucks that we're going to purchase for the city workers. This is done usually every year about this time. We amended the one for 19. This is the one coming up for next year. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Uh, do I ask all my questions now or can I ask questions as we get through the item? Um, what well, do you have some that you want to ask now? I mean, we we can. Depends on what the explanation you have is. Okay. Well, we can. I don't. I don't. You know. I don't mind taking the questions as long as we don't. And I'm not saying cut you short. I just. I don't want it to get real lengthy. So. But. I don't want to be here all night. Exactly. So yeah, that's fine. We'll, as we go, as long as everyone else is okay with that. All right. Uh, comments from members of the public. Committee reports. Your resolution. Other business. Other business. Uh, all right. You get caught up here. Um, a few months back, I had sent council out this packet that we have here now. This is the blue thing. It's Miami Valley Lighting. Uh, this is the company that we pay to light our streets, uh, uh, that we do the assessment for the street lighting on. I met with him uh, a few months ago, and he is proposing that we change out our uh, current Cobra heads to LEDs. Um, what that will do will give increased visibility. Uh, there is a diagram on here that shows a before uh, and comparisons between the LEDs and what we currently have. Um, he will be coming on November 18th to our work session um, to discuss this and count. There will actually be a resolution for final read the first meeting in December uh, for the street lighting contract that we do every year. The only difference this year is they have a checkbox on that contract to inform them if the city wants to go ahead with this LED changeout proposal or not. Um, some things I do want to discuss on here, and we'll go more into this on Wednesday when Mr. Stallman is here. I wanted to bring it up tonight so council would have the information, hear a little bit about it, maybe formulate your questions in on the 18th when Mr. Stallman's there, we can ask him more in-depth questions if there are any. Uh, the first page is our current uh, inventory and pricing this is what we currently pay. So that 93,000 is what we assess our property owners uh, every year for the street lighting assessments. Uh, page three goes on to talk about the benefits of the, of the, of the LED light, what they do, uh, enhance light levels, increase satisfica satisfaction and performance. Uh, LED is considered natural light uh, and reduces energy cost and maintenance cost. Page four is when you have the high pressure sodium uh, compared to the LEDs. 
So um, it looks like the right side image is the high pressure sodium and the left side would be the LED. Uh, so I don't want people to think that the HP, the high pressure sodium is the image right below it, you switch it. The LED is clearly a lot more visible. On page five, it goes in to talk about the environment encouraging LED insulation. Um, and on page six, this is really what I wanted to talk about. It has to do with the renewal agreement. I want, people, I want the council to look at this because say we decide that we don't want to do the LED change out and we just keep it as is. Um, a one-time 5% increase on all full service prices will be effective on 1 one twenty three. So basically, if we don't do the LED change out, they're going to increase our prices by 5% on what we currently pay, which in return will have to go back into our citizens because we assess them for uh, the street lighting. Um, on the seventh page, it compares the current cost versus the LED cost. And uh, there is a difference in numbers here where it says 78 and around 78, the front says 93. This number on page seven does not include our decorative lightings. So there's about an additional 14,000 that goes on for decorative lighting that's not in this number. So if you do review this later on and you see that number on the second page, that's 93 and you see these are 78 it's because it's not including our decorative poles. So I had some questions for him when I first talked to him because when you go down on page seven and you see the uh, annual estimated decreases and monthly decreases, it's really not a lot. You're looking at an annual decrease of $212 and these are all estimated numbers and a monthly decrease of $17.67. So I was curious as to know why there was such a minimal cost savings when the LED is supposed to be a lot uh, cheaper to operate and maintain than the uh, high pressure sodium that we have now. And the answer to that is because they, they're front 93% of the LED change out cost. They're only charging us $9,725 for the one-time change-out fee. They're taking the remaining 93% of that. So his answer to me was they got to make some, a little bit of their money back. So um, that's what I wanted to present the council tonight. We are not making a decision on this tonight. I did want to inform everyone so when he is there at our work session on the 18th to discuss this in person, uh, council can have some questions uh, geared toward him. And then, again, on the, when we do vote on this street lighting uh, renewal ordinance with this company, we will have to make a decision on December 2nd. Do you have any thoughts or concerns about this project, potential project? At what point is his cost going to be covered and we're going to go back down to the normal rate? I, don't, I, I know that's a question we can ask him. Um, yeah. I don't think it's going to be reduced. I don't think we would do this for five years. I don't see in the next agreement term they're going to reduce it significantly, to be honest with you. Um, but it is something that we'll have to do. Now, the, what I want council to really critically think about is it's a one-time almost $10,000 charge, okay? But the difference between the high-pressure sodiums and the LED from a visible standpoint increases safety twofold threefold, don't call me on that stat. Just makes it a lot more easy to see out there. I don't want to put you on the spot, but you guys had done this change out in Bethel, correct? Mm -hmm. And your residents were, they like the change? Very pleased. Very pleased because of the enhan enhanced light. Enhanced lighting, a safer you know, environment from the bright lights on our streets. So yeah. good, it's good uh, PR for the city to do something with, you know, using taxpayers' money to upgrade for better. Sure. Keep them safe. So even though we're not seeing this drastic savings on an annual or monthly basis, we are seeing such an improvement in the overall quality of lighting. The LED lights last longer, I think, than the sodium. They don't heat up. They don't go out. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of the sodium lights, when they get to a certain temperature, in the summer months, they just turn off for up to maybe 15 minutes before they kick mm -hmm. back on. It's a slow come back on and I instant off when they do do that. Mm -hmm. The, uh, I think the, the LED lights, they are brighter. I mean, look at the cars that's got them. I think it'd be the absolutely a best move for the city to, for council to, to do that. The, uh, you know, uh, I know years ago and I don't know if the kids has figured it out, but if you kick that pole hard enough, you can knock that light out, not lock, knock it out, but, turn it off for 15 minutes or so. 
and uh, then it gradually will come back on. The LED lights, you can kick that pole all day long, that light ain't going out until electric's cut, unless you hit it with a truck or knock it down or something. I mean, mm -hmm. imagine it'll break it then. But, but I think the LED would be a smart move on council's part to, to do that. I would just like to add, there is currently what you see out in some of these Cobra lights are white light. Those are original mercury vapor. They started switching out to high pressure sodium, which is yellow. So you notice our city is kind of a mix, white, yellow. And then LED almost, I wouldn't say it comes all in one color, but there's LEDs here to stay for a while. Uh, they're not going to be coming out with something else where we'll have white LED and then now some new finagled thing coming out. So this will help be more uniformity for sure. Mm. And then I want also kind of think about this too. I mean, at some point in time, I think this is going to be mandated. Mm -hmm. uh, at some point in time, there are, he approached me last year, but it wasn't so much of a he wanted us to pay more of it. Um, this year he came back with a much more palatable uh, fee figure, uh, but also too, but th th page six should give you a warning that they are starting to impose that one point one, one time 5% fee. At some point in time, they're going to force people to change out to LED. It's cheaper on them. It's cheaper on whoever they service with. Uh, you're replacing bulbs at a, at a last rate, so it makes sense to me. But in for, it's, it's, since it's tied to that contract as a checkbox, I, 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 I need to get council's opinion on it because we either have to approve the contract with checking that box or approve the contract and not do the project. So I just want to make sure that council understands that on December 2nd, we're going to have to have, we're going to have to probably have an answer. Um. What's the, uh, Mr. Kitko, I don't know if you are aware of this, like, what's the, I mean, LEDs do fail. I mean, I'm, my whole house is LED, and every now and again, one will go after being in there for, you know, maybe a year. What's the cost to replace one when, it, you know, ballpark? I mean, are they really expensive to outright buy when you need to replace it? Uh, we just did our water plant here not too long ago. We converted from 400 watt high pressure sodium to, I believe it was 100 or 120 watt LED, and I think each fixture was close to 100 bucks each. Okay. Um, the other bulbs were only like 20 bucks, but they're supposed, they're on off instantly. There's mm -hmm. no heat, there's no, I mean, so. And I remember years ago you used to say that, uh, you know, because I, I was real interested in these years ago, but uh, you said at the time, you know, which LEDs were a lot newer, uh, the heat, the lack of heat was a problem in the winter time because the snow would just sit and it, it wouldn't melt off. It would just cover up the light. Mm -hmm. um, any updates and changes with how that works now? Yeah, most of like the when the traffic signals come in, yeah, those some of them they'll have heaters in, or the units themselves produce enough heat okay. to to keep that off. Okay. But uh, commercial LEDs are definitely come way farther than residential LEDs that you even find at Lowe's or Home Depot. Their their burn times are supposedly they just they can't test it that long. Obviously, they haven't been out that long. Right. All right, council, any other questions or feedback or comments? Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Thanks, sir. Sure. Can I go on to the next section, sir? Yes, sir. Let's get in. All right. So the capital improvement plan. Uh, thanks for everyone for showing up tonight. This is, I want to stress, this is the absolute first step in the overall budget process. We have to do this before we start looking at our, or submit to council our 2020 operating budget. Um, so this plan will be amended. You know, so um, at the last meeting, uh, some uh, some council members were inquiring about our budget being done at the first of the year to be ready to go. And our finance director did an excellent job as, as explaining as to why at times that's tough. Because we don't have, we don't carry mo over millions of dollars like a Beaver Creek does or a Tip City does, you know. So when you have surplus funds in these accounts, it's very easy to go ahead and do your budget for the next year because you'll have that reserve to help kind of pick up for it. Our funds don't have that. So it's tough for us to do our budget or uh, beginning of the year because we don't know how it's going to close. Um, so this plan, as, as we've done in year past, this meeting is just, it's a formality in a sense. It's a good time to get together and give you what we truly need. But of course, this will be amended once our final numbers come in for 2020. And then we know how much proposed revenue we have coming in for uh, 2020. So with that being said, we can start off. I don't know how mayor wants to run the meeting. If you just want me to take it and be done. Yeah, do I would, that. yeah, I'd say we just go, you know, go down each page and, uh, you know, we'll just have you go through it. And if anyone has any questions, we'll <coughs> just address them. Okay. Awesome. And, and everyone, just like you said, keep in mind, this is the first step. So that's, yeah, well, yeah, 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 let's yeah, not yeah. spend two hours on There's, one thing. Yep. One thing on this CIP, as it's been in years past, 
we have to do this because of law, but everything in here is going to be changed when we find out what the budget is, mm -hmm. once the financial director actually tells us how much money we have and all these funds and what the, what the general fund has. So the, the, uh, this is basically a rough draft of what it's going to be at some point next mm -hmm. year after March. Sure. Because the budget won't even get done till March and discussed and passed because it has to be to the auditor by the, uh, I believe, March 31st. And then at that point, this will be revisited and things will be cut or added or whatnot. Sure. That's the way it's always been in the past. Absolutely. And that's the same game plan we're going now. So uh, page, the first page on there, uh, minus the cover page, is just an overview of all the capital expenses department-wide. Uh, so that's just really just a dollar amount overview. It really doesn't give any figures as to what those numbers mean as far as what they're purchased for, just a department total. So we start on page two. Uh, we'll start with city council capital expenses. I don't know how council feels about this. I was up kind of doing it. I just put $6,000 in there. Again, we can entertain it more when we talk about the operating budget, um, but that is for technology upgrades across the board for you guys, whether it be uh, refurbished iPads. Uh, I think last year, year before I got a quote for new iPads, it was high, Yeah. Uh, but I can get a refurbished. I got personally just got a refurbished 12.9 inch iPad Pro. It was like three years old for 399 bucks. You know, so there's ways we can get technology in the council to where we don't have to worry about spending money on printing out papers. You guys have a tablet, it's preloaded, I email it to you, you open it up, it's boom right there. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're going out away and you need to take that with you, you need to access your email. It can also be put on there. What I do need to look at is we have an agreement now with the bridge group to monitor all our stuff because um, in the city of Riverside, some of the municipalities are getting hacked by hackers and they go in and they basically hold your stuff at ransom. We don't want that to happen because it's very costly to get out of it. You know, so this technology update with you guys is also going to uh, result in an increased uh, fee for monitoring those and protecting those on a monthly basis. So, but I did want to put it in there. I do want council to think about that over the next two months, but I am an advocate of finally getting you guys tablets, some sort of technology that we don't have to worry about the paper process because we do spend money on the paper. So any questions on city council, anything you'd like to see added or taking away? Mm -hmm. Council, anyone? No. Scott? Mrs. Grimm, uh, Mr. Grimm, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that Gail thing's on my head still, I'm so sorry. Gail? Mr. Grimm? I did? Okay, sure. Mrs. Eggleston. I don't want to leave you out. Mrs. Howard? Okay, no problem. <laughs> uh, city manager capital expenses, this is uh, for me. Uh, office furniture. Anytime that you see a mention of office furniture in this thing, I want council to realize something. I, we did that for a purpose. We don't want the new renovations to include the furniture for multiple reasons. One, I, we want to be able to have a more say in what we get. But if we put that part of the bids package, it's going to be up. It's going to be marked up by 20, 25 percent. Oh yeah. So there's a reason why when we see office furniture in there, it's actually ultimately to save us money. Mm -hmm. we, we we need we need furniture for the new building, obviously, uh, but we don't want to pay any extra than what we really need to for that. So uh, for me, seven thousand dollars. I'm telling you right now, I'm not going to use that. It is in there. Is that something? Once we get closer to the budget, we can drop out. Um, I, I plan on taking my desk that I have in my office now. I love it. There's a $300 desk I got from Ikea. I can stand up at it or I can roll it down to sit up at it. I may get a, maybe a small table or something and some filing cabinets, but I don't see myself going out this year and buying a whole new system, like a cherry oak wood system. Uh, so that's why the $7,000 in there. I do have in 2024, 3,500 set away again for a technology update, which is gonna be a desktop computer or a laptop. I got my Mac, I think last year, the year before, it's still going strong. I don't see that going down. Uh, but I may want to get a desktop in a few years. Some questions? Um, Mr. Bridge, does, yes. does this include, I know, I remember seeing it last year, does this expense also, does this line also include fuel for you when you are out driving for city purposes? It is not, the fuel's not a capital no, expense, but that budget. is a line item in the actual budget. Okay. Yep, yep. Thank you. Thanks for the lookout. All right, if we're done with page two, we can go on to page three. This is a finance capital expense, and this is uh, Debbie's uh, uh, capital expenses, that what she feels she will need. I do want to point out the software support. We have yearly, have always paid X amount of dollars to our from SSI for software support. It's a yearly maintenance thing that they get for making their calls and supporting the 
software from, from the back. Um, before we updated, it was around 21, 22, but we never put it in for a capital expense. I think Debbie did the right thing this year by putting in as a capital expense, uh, just to show council that every year we have to pay a maintenance fee agreement for that software that we do have, and that is about $28,000 a year. Um, we also have the capital asset tracking. This is something that we absolutely need to start. Um, that is something that we get dinged on every year for our audits, and um, it's about time that we started going forward and, and making corrections on that. So I do want people to understand that below these numbers, there clearly is an, an expense description. So if you have any questions on any of those descriptions, please let us know as well. Um, network server protection, that is what I just told, uh, uh, discussed with everyone about the city's municipalities being hacked. And we have a contract in place with Bridge Group to, for them to monitor and to protect our uh, technology. So that will also have to be uh, expended as a capital expense. W does have $35,000 in there for furniture to new city building. But W also has quite a few staff members that do report to her. And that would be the tax department. That would be um, our account payable. That would be our water utility clerk um, at account, accounts payable. So she's looking at four or five offices right off the bat that we're going to have to put some furniture in. Again, we did not want that part of the bid package because we didn't want to pay any more than what we absolutely have. Doesn't mean we're going to expend that $35,000. I think in the next couple months that he's going to really sit down now that we have the final measurements of, of the office spaces, that we, we can go in and kind of get a better idea of what they can get that's going to fit in those spaces. So that number probably will be amended um, once we have further information going on, but I did want to put a placeholder in there to let council know this, that we will have to have purchase some furniture for the finance department. Computer replacements, their computers have not been up updated um, for quite some time now. Uh, we do need to upgrade those to at least something that has Windows 10 in it because the Windows 7 is not being serviced much, lo uh, uh, much longer. Past January. January is what it is. January. So we need to protect uh, that computer and upgrade uh, all those finance computers to something with Windows 10. Are these going to be uh, standalone computer units? Or are we? Okay, but are we going to a... Uh, master computer that everybody's computer will feed into a server like oh a server server. oh a server yeah we already have that that that's not that's fine we that's fine we're not getting one in here these are just like your okay. office like the computer they work on in the daily that's what it is we just got the server not too long ago didn't we please within a, within a couple of years yeah, i think years. yeah that, that's been, that's awesome because we share files on that all the time all right. yep then the laptops will be connected to the servers correct some are some are not like your guys' council, they went off. No, I mean, right, the city offices will be connected to the server. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah they are now. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that's where, like, I had, like, I put my permit, like, all the permits that are issued in the city. Uh, staff member had recommended I put it on the server so someone, anyone can access that. Someone comes in, I don't know what my permit number is, they can access that. And I'll put the legislation on there. So if I'm not in and Debbie needs to know when the legislation was passed, she can access it through there. So it's made, a, it, it's made a quite a good difference for us having that server there. Um, printer purchase, <laughs> um, we will have we have a, a big printer that we pay a, a monthly maintenance fee on. It's in our hallway when you walk in our building now. That's going to be uh, at some location at the new city building, but we're going to need another one. We don't want, we just want a, a, desktop. a desktop professional grade printer. I don't want anything that's going to have to have a contract or maintenance on it. Or anything like that. We just want something. They make these professional for three for three thousand dollars. You can buy probably ten of them over to Office Max. But we need to make sure it has the fax it has facts and, and, and scans so, and all that yeah, stuff. Yeah. Again, it. we just wanted to place a, order in there to let you guys know. What, what for a happen. small office, they they're rated at twenty or twenty five thousand sheets a month or something like that. Yeah. Uh, and everybody could have their own printer theoretically for three thousand dollars. Well, we're not doing that. Like I said, we just need to make sure that we have one central one on that second or first floor that people can fax out of. or Because we have, I have an individual printer in my room, a little HP81. You know, but I can't fax to that. I can't scan and send things off. That's another thing we do. We scan a lot of documents and we send them off to people. So we need to make sure it has that capability as well. But again, I don't want to get into something. We don't need a massive one like we already have in the city building. That's X amount of dollars a month and we got to pay maintenance on it. You know? <coughs> So yep. something we'll look into. We might have to streamline that price a little more. So I think we can get for under three thousand. I think I think it'll be down around the thousand dollar range. Uh, and, Epson, and Epson workforce is two ninety nine right now, and they have been for several years. Well, I kind of know what you're and talking about. Small, that. I want to go a little bit higher. It's a small business that. printer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. So anything has all the capability. If we find one under twenty one hundred dollars, which is our capital purchase threshold, that will just be coming off completely because it's not considered a capital purchase if it's under X amount of dollars. But if it is over that, well, we'll do some more research on it. I just wanted the placeholder in there to let you guys know that we're going to be needing some sort of a decent printer, uh, a second one. Any questions on finance? Yes, sir. No. <clears throat> and then we'll move on to planning. Uh, page four, office at new furniture building. Um, we have on the second floor, we have some cubicles being built out. I think I told the council this maybe at the last meeting. Mm -hmm. On the second floor on the right, uh, depending on what side you walk in, what <coughs> side of the building tends to be the west side. We had cubicles being built for the planning department. Well, it was later determined through a meeting with him that we can actually omit that from the plans and save a lot of money and then buy what we want a la carte afterwards. So I did find a company down, um, there's one in Dayton, one in Cincinnati. They have a three system used one for about $16,000. So I'm gonna contemplate even taking that down to a two system opposed to a three. But again, I did not, anything that I could take out of that bid proposal and that's do it ourselves. I, I pretty much did. So that's what that is. We will still need uh, some, some office furniture for the planning department on the second floor. Um, ArcJS software, <clears throat> we wanted to get that last year. I, mean, I didn't put enough money in, I didn't realize how expensive that had shot up. I know when I worked on it, grad school is like maybe 1200 bucks, you can get a subscription. Well, you can't do that anymore. It's a lot more expensive. And I will be advocating to hire a full-time city planner next year. Um, I gotta take some load off me. Um, and I think that we're doing a disservice by not having one. If we hire a city planner that can do economic, it'd be more of a planning director title, that's what we call it, but you do city planner stuff, economic development, go out and talk to businesses, go out to county, talk to businesses, uh, manage our code enforcement <coughs> program. Any city planners want to come here, we're going to need the ArcGIS software. At that point in time, we can create our own city maps, we can uh, map our underground utilities, we can map fire hydrants, even though we have one, but that's the kind of stuff. If you look at that zoning map right there, <coughs> That's what the ArcJS software does. It's a mapping software that allows the community to make their own maps. <coughs> that is a subscription. I put a $2,000 in 2024 for any kind of upgrades that they would charge us for, because uh, uh, we won't upgrade it for three years. So at some point in time, we'll have to see if we have to upgrade it. That's why there's money in there for 2024. Voices are there, sorry. Any questions on the planning side? Of <coughs> uh, just one real quick one. I mean, it's kind of a dumb question, but Mr. Kiko, how, I mean, with that, being able to lay stuff like that out, the uh, utilities and stuff with that program, I'm assuming that would help you out a lot, right? Yes. A lot of them are wrong. Huh? A lot of them are wrong. Because they use our AccuGlobe, but we're not having that discussion. Accu, it's, it's a competitor. They're competitors of each other. Our GIS is far more superior. The county uses AccuGlobe, and it's kind of the off time time is working on people that you rely on. Yeah, so. Yeah. All right, but, thank yeah. you. That's all I had. Sure. Council, any other questions? All right, no. page five. All right, moving on. This is the parks capital expense. Um, shelter house aggression to upgrade, that is something that we took out. I still think that council needs to upgrade that shelter house, especially if you're gonna continue on to anyone having um, meetings there. Um, I think last year was 50 up an additional opinion. Next, I knew though there was talk about uh, in increasing the acoustics and then um, doing some parking improvements on the outside. Again, just because there's 60,000 in there doesn't mean we're gonna use it all. Uh, but it is something that we do want to place mark because I do think that's still high on council's priority list. But you guys graciously took that out to allow us to buy new vehicles for employees. And thank you for putting their safety first because that's probably was the right thing to do. But we still need to address the shelter house. What about a uh, whiteboard and uh, the uh, projector that we could tie laptops into and possibly give the audience a little bit better idea of what we're going sure. through? Uh, that's something we'll look into. If we can get that system, like a smart board or something like that, for under the 2100, it won't be considered a capital purchase. Uh, we can include it in the shelter house additions and upgrades. I don't see why you couldn't. Um, but uh, we'd have to change the definitions on that. If you look at the bottom, I don't have the smart board on there and technology upgrades. But if we want to include that in there, I just add technology upgrades to that definition line item. I think it now, should let me be. Ask this. Do you want that to be a separate line item on the CIP? Or do you want it just included in the upgrades and additions? It doesn't make me any difference as long as we know the, what we're talking about. Yeah, I mean, it I mean, it's, I'm fine with leaving it in with the upgrades. I mean, I, yeah, I mean, I think it's actually a good idea. Just keep it in and adding to the definition. Yeah. Are we talking about the uh, floor? Or are we talking about a 
an epoxy coating or one of those uh, other type of floors that I'm trying to think of the name of it. One that looks like stone. Yeah. Now, then we had a guy come in and he gave us a, a sample, which I still have in my office. Yeah. I don't know if, I don't know if you need it. But that's up to... It's going to be leveled out. Isn't, oh. it, isn't it kind of off? Yeah. And not level a little bit? You we'll know? probably have the company that did the concession stand and, or I'm sorry, the pool building this year, the restrooms that we had done. The company here in New Carlisle had done those. Yeah. Well, oh, well, I, I can't remember if that's who you had. Up off yeah. Brubaker. Garage Kings. Yeah. yeah, that's what it was, yeah. Another thing we need, because I also remember talking about this now, now that I think about it is, depending on how those acoustical panels play out, we need, may need to add carpeting to the floor. Yeah, I don't know if carpeting would be a good idea. Well, I'm just saying, if we're going to spend a couple thousand dollars on acoustical panels and they're not doing any good because of the cement floor, there's no point of buying the $2,000, $3,000 worth of acoustical panels. That's so I'm just saying, if, if we go in and we are prepared to put the acoustical panels up and it don't make much of a difference, the next option is to carpet the floor. Is that where you suggested the carpet square? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, we have food in there. And, and you just rip a square up and, and you replace it. Yeah. And I don't know how that would look, but I weird. I wouldn't uh, be much for carpet mm -hmm. unless we could find something that we can hose down. I mean to say you can get good quality industrial. Well, not industrial. What is it? Commercial. Yeah, it's commercial. Don't buy the indoor, outdoor. Mm -hmm. But you still yeah, go to it, restaurants it, and stuff, and it looks terrible. Uh, with this room, if you look around, everything in here is a hard surface except for the curtains and these acoustical tiles. Oh, so yeah. this is basically a similar setup to the shelter house, only not in size. But you can tell, I mean, these are considered, they call it the drop ceiling, but they're acoustical. They absorb sound, and then you only got three curtains. So I think with what we want to do with those panels, I think they will help uh, a lot. And this is hardwood floor, and we don't get much echo in here at all. Yeah. Well, the also the new audio system that they're using to record is a whole lot better now too. The the YouTube sound is way better than what it used. The concern for me was not so much the we have speakers for that. That's always one of the fun. It was the people sitting in the audience right. and here. And Mr. Kicker brought up a good point, but to play devil's advocate, the ceilings in the shelter house are way taller. Oh yeah. And they're arched like this, so it's going to encompass and keep that sound up there. It's going to bounce back up, but. We are trying to get the low-level acoustical panels that kind of go in between the lights, which may include, but here's what I'm just saying to council. I mean, if we're going to spend X amount of dollars on these acoustical panels, it may or may not work. So that's a gamble you we're going to have to take. And if we put these things up to the best of our ability and it really doesn't make any, much of a difference, how are we going to address the floor situation? Are you planning on putting a drop ceiling in the shelter house then? No, no. The acoustical panels I were, looked at, they're... They, you, they hang down and they sit almost parallel to the lights, but they're still going to be open spots. Do you know anybody that uses those now? Oh, I mean... I was what, just curious how they work, panels. the panels. Yeah, to me, the, honestly, the way we're... I, they're, they're similar type buildings, but I still think the shelter house is bigger than this place. Well, I what think the makeup of the walls are completely different. I think that the ceilings are different, so... We just got to be prepared to go above and beyond if we spend all this money on acoustical panels and it doesn't make that much of a difference. I'm sure we could probably find someone local in the Dayton or some, you know, at least from Columbus or Cincinnati if need that could give us some uh, consulting and tell us what will and will not work. I'm assuming there's people that are professional that can tell us that. Yeah, well, another thing we, too, so another thing we talked about with him and uh, the bridge group when they were there is putting a um, thick fabric curtain, essentially, behind mm -hmm. you guys. So it'd cover up the fireplace and all that stuff. It would help keep that sound from bouncing. here. So if it's behind Mr. Cook and Cobb over there by by, by Miss Eggleston, it, it could bounce back and it'd be a lot easier. So maybe we look at the acoustical panels as a mixture of the panels and then the curtain. <coughs> and then that's the best we can do. So it doesn't sound like and I I'm on the fence about the carpet in the shelter house. I think it would make take the horror away from being a shelter house a long cabin yeah yeah and then you got maintenance issues you got to deal with um and then we don't know how long much longer council is going to be there yeah. i mean from a rent let's rent this place for a party type situation i think it's perfect it's just not good for what we do right so we'll leave it in there we can just add it i can add technology upgrades to that definition is everyone okay with that 
Everyone good? Mr. Cobb, you okay with that, Mr. Cobb? We've right. had technology upgrades to that definition. I'm against everything in here. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> everything. The whole everything. CIP. The whole CIP, I'm against. Why would you be against the whole CIP? You're in, you're in here wanting to spend money. Okay. All right. You're getting hog wild on, on, on office equipment. You're already 40 some thousand office equipment. That doesn't mean we're going to spend it, though. It's in here. Well, I can't, I can't agree with it, and I won't agree with it. I don't understand why you don't think the city should pass a CIP plan. That's part one. It's a charter requirement. And financial well, financial I understand that, but we're getting too wild here. How do you expect? Okay. Well, that I respect your opinion. I mean, I respect your opinion. All right. Um, okay. <coughs> you just want to finish going down that list? Uh, yeah. Uh, playground fall equipment at $15,000. The grant money that we, we've got for the past couple of years, I think, is that this is the last year I ran on it, 19. Um, I did order some swing sets. I have not gotten any verification, so I'll probably be updating house on that on the 18th or the, on the second once they actually get verification. Um, but the grant system that we had is, is, is probably not going to come back. Now, with that being said, I am open to slashing that for a couple of years because we've been really aggressive the past three, four years of upgrading our parks. Mm -hmm. um, I still want to get the bike extra try stopped, but lesson learned. They are not cheap. I had ten thousand dollars put back for a couple. That would, I got to put way more than that back because these units are, are not, not, not cheap. So again, I am open to taking some of that out. Um, however, council wants to move the city forward when, when their parks and rec department is really your guys' decision. I at least wanted to put some money in there for placeholders um, because we have gotten fantastic feedback for for the improvements we've done at the parks. Mm -hmm. So I kind of wouldn't want, if I had to choose between the exercise stops and the playground equipment, I'd rather have the playground equipment and kind of shoot for the exercise stops maybe, you know, a couple years down the road. Right. But, again, that would be council's decision how you guys want to move forward with that. Well, while we're on that item, what is the, um, I don't want to say this, what's the condition of the truck? Um, you've got that truck way out there and what 24 um does that need to be moved up the grapes truck no we're already this one we're getting ready to purchase now and then um so ron's truck essentially we're going to buy a truck for ron and one for cemetery yeah and part of it i think so what is what kind what kind of condition is greg's truck in that he drives the one Greg drives his pickup is being replaced. It's being replaced here ASAP. Ron's truck is being here replaced ASAP. So then this park truck will be part of the. Oh, one. gotcha. Gotcha, because Greg's truck's out of the cemetery. Yes. Yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. He uses it for both. Okay. Is there any vehicles in the fleet in the parks that park specific uses that needs to have a truck prior to 2024? I, I mean, it's sitting out at 2024. Who knows where we'll be in four or five years? But. It, and, you know, if we get in there and our vehicles are still in excellent condition because the new one we're getting here at the end of 19, um, that could potentially end up going to 25 or 26. It just, we also have another truck that we use for the, the parts. It's not a sole purpose, but mm -hmm. it could be someday that dump truck, you know, needs a, a portion of it covered because we use our vehicles through various departments. Okay. So okay, some debate for some council. While we're on that, what what is this utility cart you've got twenty grand in there for? Uh, basically, that is the um, the uh, like the John Deere Gators. Um, we now have a Kubota one, and we utilize that to get through um, the park for getting the uh, blower around. Um, just it's park work, and then sometimes we'll take it out of the cemetery to get in between gravestones because our dump truck don't hold fit in between the old section of the gravestones. Um, but I think in the description, but that's what that one is. I think the last one we got was right around seventeen, eighteen thousand. The one we got uh, now, I think we got it almost ten years ago. Okay, so basically we've got what two gators? Uh, we have uh, two gators and a Kubota one that's at the cemetery. And you're planning on replacing one of those? Yes. Okay. Yeah, actually, one of the gators that was the parks is from the nineties. They're it's early. Well, you guys use it for the heritage of. They're rough. I, I can. They're they're. Yeah. <laughs> are, are they absolute operating necessity? 
That I don't know. They use it for getting around the, the plants. Yeah, I mean, absolute, I would say no, but you're close. Okay. Yeah. So we'll have to keep that for discussion purposes. Something that we have, let's see how the, the parks is paid out of the general fund. So right. this is one of the line items. If anytime you see a fund number 101.1800 or anything that begins with 101, that's out of the general fund. So it's really depending on how the general fund does. If this was like a street only purchase that didn't come out of the street funds and stuff like that. So we'll keep it as an item of discussion. Uh, maybe move back a year and we may move that truck purchase up. But we do have placeholders in there for that. Uh, we have a wood chipper on there for $17,500 and a $12,000 mower. Uh, wood chipper looks like it's going to be uh, split with 201, and then the mower is just going to be for the parts. Our wood chipper, it gets, no, that's separate. I was thinking it's not, that's not the same machine that can be used for the leafs, is it? Correct. No, it's different. Okay. Now, this wood chipper has been rebuilt um, on basically one and a half times. It was a full rebuild way back when we did a community cleanup. It blew up. We rebuilt it again here five years ago or so um, and as much tree work as we've been doing you know, we're we can rent one and if we have a project we're doing renting is not a bad thing but we do so much of our own park tree work path work mm -hmm. cemetery everywhere yeah um, it it might be good to start looking at a chipper because we also do some brush pickup some we chip some we go take the clamshell with the backhoe and go grab it and do it that way good would this be a new chipper or a used one um, it, it, it could, it could be tell. either or. If we find a good Vermeer that, you know, it, it's hard to tell out there. Some company may have went in, two years later they went upside down, and you, we might find a good deal. The Vermeer, if I understand other people talking, it's probably the best one in the market, correct? It's, it's one of the best out there, okay. yes. What is it called? Vermeer. V-E-R-N-E-R. V-E-N. It's V-E-R-M-E-E-R. Say that one more time. That's your top line. B E R M E E R. I think it's on it's gotcha. or something like that. Okay. So on my notes, I put utility cart necessity question mark. We'll have to get to that when we get down there. And then um, anything else on here that you guys want to see moved around, uh, omitted, or added? And like I said, we I just want everyone on the same page tonight because when I introduce this resolution on Monday, it's actual and final form. You know, so I, I, all these numbers, unless we <coughs> change them, but it's one resolution, one read, you vote on it. So I need to make sure everyone's on the same page. So when you see the final resolution, there's going to be a lot more professionalness. I'll put my charts in there and stuff like that. Um, we just got to make sure everyone's on the same page. I don't want any issues when we actually go to introduce and vote on it on Monday. What type of trailer are you looking at, Howard? Is it a utility <coughs> trailer or cargo trailer or what? Um, it would be an under wheel well trailer, something that we can haul, not the big backhoe, but the small backhoe and haul some equipment with. Okay. And didn't we just buy a mower for... It was in the 19 budget. Uh, we could not find the six foot deck version of what we wanted. So we moved it and we're getting a head start to get one um, okay. order for 2020 to get in. Both of our parks mowers are five foot decks. Mm -hmm. We want to get those to six foot and get out there and be able to mow more per swipe than what we're doing okay. now. So the money from 19 is basically what you're moving to 20? Okay. In theory, yes. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions with the parks? <clears throat> Council, any other questions? Scrap it. The whole thing? The whole thing. All right, page All right. six. Lands and buildings. So uh, I don't know how much the bid prices are going to, I mean, the bids are going to come back in for renovation. Um, I know when he's here, before we took council chambers out, it was about four, four, four fifty. Um, we did take council chambers out. I don't know what the bid specs are going to be. Um, I do think they're going to be significantly lower than the 430. But again, I want to have something in there that we don't have to go and amend it once it's back in there. Uh, just because it says 430, it, I earmarked it only for a renovation of the city building, and then the furniture is separate. So basically, that purchase, the renovation is to actually accept the bids and renovate the building. Question. Mm hmm what was our bid price, or what was the last price we had for tearing down the old school building? Upwards of two hundred thousand dollars, or something like that. It was between two or three, I think. Mm -hmm. That was years ago. We want to look at putting something in there for that because I don't know if we'll be able to afford tearing that building down. What What if you were to reduce this uh, renovation? Well, leave the renovation as in. Take 200 of that money and then 
float the bonds for the what's left over that's needed for the city building. You're saying taking 230 out of the 430? Yeah, take or 300, whatever it's going to be to take that building down. Uh, I, I like the fact that council is being aggressive with trying to get that building down, but I don't think the new city buildings should suffer because that's what building still up. Am I, we're, not, we're not, no. we're not, oh, okay. we're not, we're talking at that point then if you, let's say you take 300, so now you got 130 left. So that means if you turn around and take $300 and float the bonds or take a loan on that city building and get it done, I think we're going to possibly present a better picture of what we're doing to the citizens by virtue of putting that much cash into the city building. See what he's saying? Basically finance some of the some of the total, like just for conversation's sake, if it's you know four hundred and fifty thousand, finance two hundred and fifty or three hundred of that and then use that, put some of it towards tearing down the school. That that's council's council decision. Um <clears throat> um, you know, if we, if we keep tossing that school around, we're never going to get it down. Right. Did we ever, not to change your subject drastically, but did we ever, was was that a done deal with the gentleman who offered the, the you know, we'll tear it down for X amount if we get the land? Was that squash? That was, yeah, I don't think it was any no, that He was takes kind the of, land. We don't get the land. He took no. the land. We right. Give him we like pay 100, him 300000 Yeah, that was not a... I don't think yeah, that good. wasn't a good deal for the city. Yeah. Now, I know the land bank is going to be up and going again. I know that something they would want to do that on. I think if we put money back to tear it down, because here we can always add a line out of to tear that school down. We'll have to see how the general fund plays out. You know, we'll see how it closes. My goal is to not finance anything for the renovation of the city building. I, I, I understand. I mean, that, that to, is to, my, to that's renovate, my goal. To, to I'm not pay. saying we can do that, but I brought up the last meeting. We, as a, we, one of our cell tower leases, they're interested in selling that, the making that a perpetual lease. What that means is we don't get the monthly rent from it. We'll get a check for two hundred thirty thousand dollars. Right. You know. So, yeah. but we lose about twelve thousand well, a year out of yeah. the general fund because of the monthly receipt. It's a steady stream of money, which right. is nice. Now, now I talked to her because I said, listen, I don't think this technology is going anywhere anytime soon. She's like, I agree with you. But the problem is what we're seeing now, all these carries are combined. Right. They're all I mean, sharing each other's yeah, towers. they're all sharing. So he, she's like, the moment that that tower is not profitable then, they can end that lease that we have any given time. Yeah. So it's almost a, and I'm still on the fence about it. Yeah, I, I truly am because, yeah, we're taking monthly rent revenue out of the general fund permanently for having a two hundred thirty thousand dollar check given to us mm -hmm. so it's just like and the question is how much longer are cell towers that's the thing so it's just like do you just cut out now and take the money because you know five years down the road i don't think it's gonna be five years but i mean our lease current lease goes to like 2032 or something like that right check, 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 they want to extend it so you know um technology so is always changing so we get 12 grand a month a year a year a year. And they would pay how much? Uh, that, that, that monthly revenue would go away, so the yearly 12 grand would go away. And they would pay uh, $230,000. For how much? $230,000. Well, that's what they offered right now. Oh, it takes about 26 years to get our to see anybody now, to have an actual. I mean, it is what it, so I, like it, I don't make, I can't make that decision. I can only gather the information and give it to council and the council make that. Call. Is that negotiable at all? That price or is it? You know, I, I picked her brain about it because I was trying to get it done uh, soon, uh, but it's a, actually about a four or five month process because they have to go through underwriting, they all kinds of stuff they do on their end. Um, the number she gave me, she said was pretty aggressive. Of course, we'll go back and say we want 300. They probably won't budget 230. So what they probably offer to give us is I'd go back at 250 and go get it. I, I, would I mean, say. we'll try to counter. I mean, it's that's only 20 grand, and if they can yeah. get rid of the tower, they would do that, I think. But back on the city building, I think the if the general fund can handle this expense, that building should be bought and paid for with no loans on it. The uh, if you want to borrow money, which apparently you do. <laughs> Uh, borrow the money to tear down St Madison Street School was. I agree. Uh, I you want to but, do it. But I'm, yeah. not, I'm not even for, you know, but I'm not going to be here, so it doesn't matter what I say. But I don't think, you know, uh, borrowing money 
if we can afford to do it and possibly get money from the uh, land bank. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. To to do it, we should have done it last time. It didn't happen. If we get the money from the land bank, bank this time, council, somebody ought to make the motion that that money goes to rip down Madison Street School and get that eyesore out of this city. And if this city building don't get done, we're going to have two eyesores in this city. And one of them is going to be right downtown. I've got a question, a stupid question probably, but what is a land bank? Uh, the land bank is a, is a, is a government, quasi-government agency. It's done out of the county where they go and they get dilapidated structures, underperforming issues, and they either purchase them to the town, uh, they renovate them just to make them more productive. They made an offer to us for Madison? No. They, <laughs> go ahead. No, um, I think in the streets. 26. What we did. I had was it 26? Yeah, the CDB was that. Yeah, they yeah, got. Uh, I had worked with Tom Helmy and Mr. Kicker did we got a block grant money. I mean, it's CDBG money that we usually do to do our repairs that are in low to moderate income areas. Mm -hmm. I had that school turned toward down, under percent funded, whole nine yards. Um, I think there's a little bit that we had to pay. What school? The Madison, Madison. Street School. They were going to use block grant funds. Part of that program is you can leave a blank from it. So we're mm -hmm. using that avenue. But the council at that point in time voted against that and wanted to fix, I think, a little little thing in press. Uh, so um, we did. We One of my first things I got uh, uh, city manager was to get that school down. And we worked to get it down. We had it secure, but again, council wanted to go a different direction with the money. Now, I did have that conversation with um, the new administrator up there. And he said, that's still not, not completely out of the question. Now, what we have to also understand with that is if we elect to take that block grant money and use it on the school, we're not getting any block grant money for anything else. Probably that year, that's every three years they every, every other every other year. So we're gonna be losing some money, but then we can use some of our street lighting money to maybe and some because the street's gonna have a little bit of extra revenue coming in because of gas tax. Two hundred thousand dollars and please step please step in if I can misquote. Do another shave and pay project we have there. As long as we keep the projects going, doesn't mean we have to do a complete reconstruction, you know. If we get money again for the tear down Madison Street School, I would highly recommend the city take advantage of that. Highly recommend it. Now back to this, we can always amend this in the middle of the year. I hate right. doing that. Right. It's going to be amended anyway. Well, I'm just saying, <laughs> say June of next year, July of next year, we have something come in that we have an opportunity to get it torn down. We can go in and fix it to make it happen. Mr. Cobb. Well, you want to know what I'm upset about, and I'm going to tell you right now. You bought a building. I didn't buy a building. I bought we, a building at the direction of the city council. We you bought Mr. We bought a building. I voted no on it. But, well, but, then you need to address it with them guys. Right. But no, I'm going to address something to you because you didn't fully do your job. What, what, what did I do? You bought what we bought. I, yes, I am on council and i got to accept it. We bought a building that appraised at 115 and we spent 165000 Okay. It, now, you would have should have went in. Now you find asbestos. You should have went in and done a or hired somebody to do a um, what do they call it? study? Huh? Study? No, I, I guess a, inspector. inspector. Inspector, yeah. Mm -hmm. Which would have found your. Okay. Let me uh, just add. A, let me comment on what you said. Um, the appraised value, what the city bought it for, was actually a deal because we he actually reduced the price. The amount that was people are talking about, such as yourself is how much the auditor appraised it as based off. That's not the value of the building. That's the assessed value for taxing purposes. That does not in any way, shape, or form dictate what the building should be sold for. Second point is, um, I did get an asbestos survey done, which is why we found out we After had asbestos in the building. Um, I would, did my job at the direction of the council. The council passed the legislation for me to buy the building. I did as such. I did the other work at the But you said, you come in there Don't when say you- say me, sir. Us. When you come in there, you took council in there. Well, we're going to move council in this building. Then you turn around and went at a council meeting. Well, we're not going to put council in there because it's me. going to cost us money. No, 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 no sir. Now, okay. I'm going to tell you, I wouldn't approve it. Okay, but if I did not. I work at the <clears throat> district direction of council, point blank period. I don't well, do anything without legislation for big purchases or big things like that without council um, approving it. I didn't approve it. But, but we did. But, but they did. But we and did. I'm working at the direction of, of council. So, um, yeah. So. And, and as far as that council not being there, council made the motion and approved that motion 
to take council chambers out of the new city building and keep it at the shelter house. Right. Sir, I'm just a middleman. Council did us seven or how many was at that time? Three. Six of us or whatever Two. it was. All of us did that. He did what we told him to do. I didn't tell him to buy it. You're not the only one on council, Mr. Cobb. There's right. six of us or seven of us But if you all right sit now. back and, and remember. You, and if you say no, you got six other people that says yes, it doesn't matter what you say. The majority runs. You the and the ex-mayor sit right in there in that council chambers and said it doesn't matter what we all say, we're going to buy the building. And council voted for it. Right, Mr. Cobb, I'm the mayor and vice mayor could not buy a building because you don't even know what you're talking about half the time. Excuse it's me? Hold on, okay, hold on, guys, guys, hold on, stop. I know more about what the hell you do. Guys, stop. Please stop. You ain't none of your business what I do. Okay. Or don't do. Guys, cool down for me. Let's cool down. Stare all you want. Guys, stop. I'm not afraid of you. I ain't afraid guys, of you either. Hey, it's stop. A thing. Okay. Okay, stop. Or we'll, we'll just call the meeting right now. That would probably be a good idea because he don't like anything in this thing. Okay. It's useless even to talk about it. Okay. But he is right, you know, Mr. Cobb. You know, I, and I understand you voted no. That's why there's seven of us. So um, we'll move forward and uh, we'll keep going on tonight's agenda. When you're ready, Mr. Bridge. Yes, go ahead, Mr. Graham. There are numerous furnitures for these city buildings. Are those for different departments? Yes. Comes to eighty thousand dollars for furniture. Four hundred thirty thousand dollars for renovations. Five hundred ten. Somewhere between four seventy-five, five hundred ten. Yeah, but it's not hard. It could come down. It could come down. So it could come higher. We don't know. We don't know what the feds are going to say. I don't think that uh, it, the building renovation is probably. If I had to guess, and I don't want anyone to hold me to this word, would probably about three three to, If I had the best guess effort on what we're doing for that. Right. Um, we need furniture for a new building. So I don't want anyone to be shocked that there's furniture in there. And that's why I gave the disclaimer as to why we broke it out. Because say if we put that money for the furniture back into the bid specs. Now we're paying whatever they mark up on that furniture. All this furniture right, it's is like, not cheap. And we're going to try our best to save money. I mean, it's not like we're going to go out and buy Cadillacs of all new furniture. But clearly, I mean, if we're building a new building, common sense should tell you we're going to put furnish furniture. it. You know? Um, so we, we, we're doing the best we can with this project. Um, we're going to have somewhere between six and seven hundred thousand. It's, yeah, it's not going to be cheap, but I mean, you, we rent now. We have no space. We're, okay. yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I understand why council wanted to go through with the building. I, I truly did. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, can we back up on this a little bit? Okay. To, yeah, whatever you got. Back yeah. on uh, the city council expenditures. Oh. I don't know if it'd be under the CIP or a line item in the budget. Uh, there been a lot of talk about the chairs oh, uh, yeah. at council. Yeah. You know, they all are nasty, especially okay. the ones that council sits in. We'll go at shelter house it's, expense, it's, wouldn't it? Well, I don't, under, I don't know where that would be. Buildings. Would that, pardon me? It'd be under land and uh, park. Is it under parks? Isn't it under the shelter house renovation? Yeah, it's probably under okay. shelter house renovation. So let's go back to the previous page. Yeah, I'm glad you remember. Shelter house renovation. So, I, do you, am I adding technology to that, that definition? Please. Okay, so we can do that. Or at least I would like it. I don't know what everyone else thinks. I agree. I agree. Which one, were we on page uh, two? Page five, sorry. five. Five. Five was the shelter house. So, um, yeah, it's, it's actually included in the, if you look at the description, it says improved parking, increased <coughs> exploring tables, chairs, kitchen add addition, and oh, good. original stuff. Oh, okay. And again, just because it's listed there doesn't mean we already have to get the kitchen in, because I know that was still an area of debate among council members themselves as to which way you guys wanted to go with that. Right. So this draft, I kind of, it's fluid enough for us to allow to continue on doing city business, but also allow for conversations to take place. But it is noted under the chairs, but yeah, they are. Mm. Tables and chairs. Mm -hmm. And we've been getting complaints on those, so it's about time we did something. Which page are we going to? We're, uh, on, we're six. on page six. Okay. So how are we going to, uh, have we made a determined, Mr. Cook, about how we want to do that with the Madison School? Do you want me to add a whole new line item in there for the school? 
Do you want to wait till like we get some more information with the county can get is it, involved? Is it hard to get a, uh, Mr. I don't know, Mr. Kiko or Mr. Bridge, you're getting an up, I mean, we've probably said this a hundred times, updated. an updated price on what it is to just have someone come in and blow the thing up and haul it away? Yeah, yeah, I mean, some, we, we, we can do I mean, does that cost a lot of money to get something like that done, an estimate on that? Oh yeah, they're gonna charge us. Right, but I mean, is it, is it expensive? You could probably get it. Yeah, you could probably get an estimate for for a demo of the Madison Street yeah. School. Negative. They want it. Yeah, we need to get some up-to-date estimates because a lot. The other thing that now that we gotta think about it is we have thirty thousand dollars worth of abatement work in there. So is that something you guys want to go ahead and take care of? But yes. You know, so let's circle back that we have the quote from the Levi Enterprises that remember there's asbestos in the window frames and stuff. Yeah. Which is going to have to be removed. Even if we blow it up. Even if you blow it up. <laughs> so that's a I was I was joking. By the way. Now, Dynamite. We have people standing around with buckets. Yeah. Yeah. Did we you always earmark that because we bring this discussion back up down the road about demolition, uh, getting a demo. We can bring that in because the demo person might just include that in their price. Percent. Did you, Mr. Yeah. Kitko? Did you? I don't know if I misheard you. Did you say that you could get someone with that? They they would charge us to give us an, an estimate on that. No, they, they won't charge us. And I got about three people that I know do demos in the area. Oh, let's okay. Are they certified to do the demos with the a basis a basis in it though? I'm pretty sure. I know, I know at least two of the, the three are. Okay, but, gotcha. but don't we have an estimate or a guesstimate? About around thirty thousand dollars to abate the, that. Yeah, for the abate the investment mm -hmm. only. That, that has nothing to do with the demolition. Wait, well, I understand that. Why don't I think council ought to go ahead with the abatement, get rid of the the asbestos out of it, then whoever comes in to demo it because they don't have to mess with any asbestos in it, that bid might be a tad cheaper to have it taken down. Does that sound reasonable, Mr. Pico? It's very possible, and correct me if I'm wrong. I think asbestos may be prevailing because it's over thirty. It's over twenty-five. Yeah, seventy-five is a couple. It's seventy-five. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you could potentially have it removed, and then you won't have to pay the markup of the general contractor to mm -hmm. hire a subcontractor to do it, which could be ten to fifteen percent. So um, it could cost that way. It could cost us about fifty thousand. Cost the city fifty thousand for. Assuming with the markups and stuff from the general contractor to have somebody else come a, in and do does it. Does the demolition fall under the seventy-five thousand category or the two hundred and thirty thousand dollar category or two fifty thousand I have to go back and look at yeah. look at that. Well, I was going to ask the, the opposite question to him. Would it be, well, I mean, I guess it could go either way. I was wondering yeah. if, if someone, if we said, hey, we want your company to demo it, but it's got some asbestos. If we pick you, will you get us a break on on? Remove it. If you can't do that, it has to be bid yeah. it out. Okay. Because of the price of the overall price of the demo is going to be more than the okay. allocated amount. All right. So we once bid, what that means is we can't go and say, hey, we, once the bid specs are in, we open it and we say, yeah, you need the price. No, I mean, but they write it in their price if it was cheap. Yeah. They oh, can't. yeah, yeah. When we do it beforehand, it's going to. That's what I'm saying. But don't they have? To, don't you have to take the because it's a government entity? Take the lowest bid. <laughs> it's the lowest and or best, best bid. When you evaluate the bids, it doesn't have to be the lowest. There so could, you could take a more expensive bid. You can, depending they, on what their qualifications are, just different things. Well, if it doesn't cost us anything, can't we get one each way? You can get yeah. proposals. <laughs> From it, when you get proposals, they are given a pretty rough number because what they're going to do is they know they're going to possibly bid a bid participant. So when you go write your bid specs out and then you put it out for bid, then they know they got a number out there. Right. That's why when I do some of these proposals, I do not put them out in in public because if I got to go out with bid with them, I, I don't want to cut their throat on putting in a good bid. So um, it, it depends on how much we could get a set of s quick specs put together and actually put it out for bid and possibly reject any and all bids in that. Um, if someone's not willing to give us a, let's call it a tight proposal, because um, I know someone who did a, a large project in there, he had asbestos removal, it was a private one, um, but I just want to make sure that these people that give me these possible estimates you know, aren't putting a number out there that could shoot them in the foot later on. Right. But you can put the uh, asbestos in as an alternate bid. You can. You can put it in mm -hmm. as an alternate and, and accept or deny that as an alternate. All right. Okay. Should we go ahead and at least put anything on there? Or put it in there. there. For the, that For the removal? asbestos? Removal? Yes. Okay. So I want to get the It's one step one. closer. I mean, yeah, yeah and, if it's there, great. If we don't use it, then And you have bids side. already on that, don't you? Yeah. Well, that, that doesn't have to be under the $75,000 threshold. I have right. a quote from Levi Ambrose who did the uh, right. stuff at the downtown building. Well, could, 
<clears throat> could that go ahead and be done like this year yet yeah, or not? We didn't account for it in the CIP. Pardon me? We didn't account for that for oh, okay. this year. So it'd have to be done next year. He wouldn't be able to schedule that until after next right. year. Yeah, we're only probably uh, April a little June. over a month away yeah, anyway, yeah. so. What I'll do is I'll, what I'll do is uh, add another title, uh, like City Garage and put Madison Street School. Well, I'm going to put asbestos in there. And I'm going to put about a $5,000 cushion just in case, because um, that quote was from, I think, about six, seven months yeah. ago. Mm -hmm. And then just in case there's any cushion in there. Would council mind if I put 40 instead of the 35? Doesn't mean we're going to use it. But I don't want to have to amend it if it, you know, and of course I'll be upfront because anything over that 20,000 uh, is going to require council approval for me to sign contract anymore. Do you think 40,000 would do it? I mean, based on yes. previous, you think that oh, would yeah, do it? Oh, yeah, because like I said, he quoted okay. us at 30, so I don't know if, we, if, he, if he does it next year, is he going to raise it by 2.5? I would not. Uh, no, I'd oh. say that. I, 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 I would I, imagine going up 10 grand in yeah, six months, not. seven months. So, <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Well, we, we don't know. The EP may change the laws with how you got to bait the stuff, and right. now he's got more, you know, right. more restrictive regulations. So, anyway, whatever dollar amount we put in there, council's going to have to sign off on the agreement because it's over the $20,000 limit. Mm -hmm. right. So, 35 40 what we think. And I can only assume. Or I'm, keep it at 30 I'd, I'm assume. fine with 35 uh, 30 I'd rather do the 40 and make sure I would if, too because if 40, you don't use it all you know 40 we, we've sure heard we don't the have whole to come time. back we don't have come back and okay. the money's there and fine. then they can just you Four. know leave it sit there till next 40 time. 40 okay. 40 sounds good sounds like everyone agrees sounds good okay. and, <laughs> and, if, and if this and we haven't you haven't got to the budget yet but this CIP and the budget when they are all finalized next year uh, I think that you have an excellent track record of not spending every dime that you have available to you. At least you haven't in the last five years, uh, or yeah, five years right. that I'm aware of. Sure. Uh, the uh, and you didn't have control of the money before that, so. <laughs> nope. No, I, I. Yeah. Good point. Any other questions on lands and buildings? Nope. No. Nope. All right. So we're gonna move it on to police. Before we get started on police, I did request uh, Ben, who is that does the contract for the sheriff's office, since the levy passed, and we thank the citizens for that. I do have two contracts coming. I had a contract to remain at four, and I had a contract to add a fifth deputy. Um, we add that fifth deputy. Um, the county now has a program to where we can just basically rent a car from them, opposed to going out and buy them. Uh, part of that part of, of program two is they pay for the gas. They pay for the maintenance. They pay for the um, 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 all the equipment and all that stuff that goes with that car. I have not seen those contracts yet. I'm still waiting on those. Uh, but council will have to have a decision if you guys want to go ahead and keep it at four, at a fifth. If we add a fifth, so you guys want to buy your own car outright, or you want to take advantage of their program. So basically, I'm telling you this because the police fund. I really just threw some placeholders in there because I don't know one how the contracts are going to look out, how look, and then <coughs> council what directions council want to go. Did they give you any indication how much it cost to rent the car per month? I think it's about, I think it's a yearly cost. Okay. And I want to say it's about 12 to 13, but don't quote me on that. So that would cover the gas, the car, the purchase of the car, the maintenance of the car, you know, lights, um, that, uh, liability. Seems he's done. If it's only 12,000 a year and they pay for everything else, that's just so that, that yeah that's a deal that's a the, deal well, it is. i mean and they cover the insurance too or do we have to cover the insurance all them um oh. and I, i'm waiting on more direction on that so don't quote me anything i, I mean that's almost a no-brainer i would think sure no, uh, can we so, rent fire equipment too <laughs> so i think that's chief up didn't it <laughs> mr manaman has a, a pull cart in his in the barn <laughs> You don't have any horses, though. What I like about <laughs> car running possibility, uh, I'm, I'm like to it, is you know we may add that fifth, and, and you know we're hopefully put this on for a permanent next year. But at the same time, too, I don't mind having our own fleet because that means we can rotate what we have and put them to other city cars. So um, it's still up in the air because we haven't seen the contracts yet. But I do want to put a placeholder in there. Do you guys want to go ahead and earmark any money so we don't have to go and amend this down the road? You want to go ahead and put it in there for a new patrol vehicle. I and thought, and, I and thought we had one coming, what, next year, I thought? 
No Did we just order one? Yeah, I thought we, we you put a you put a. I thought we uh, had one order. be here in about June or something. Of next no, they you put it on. You put it on hold. Depending you guys on, on oh, yeah, the right. That's oh, yeah. right. Yeah. 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 So we still got one for nineteen that we can get. Let's add that in there for at least that one. So do we want to add? Yeah, but but the one that we put on hold was already in the in the CIP for nineteen. Is this going to carry over? We put it on hold. Well, you should go ahead and order it. I think. I mean, that's my opinion. Well, not the bit of this because it won't get here until probably what May or June, anyhow. Yeah. And buy it in for with the 19 funds. No, I told Howie to wait till the levy passed. So it's right. Passed last right. week. You're a good point. We'll go ahead and get the one for 19. So I, I would do that. that, and then uh, what's the oldest one we have? The 90. That's a charger. I mean, a 2000. 2010 charger. That's 2010 the last charger. old one. So the, this new crew, the new uh, SUV will give us four. Five yeah, yeah. Or it would give, give us five. It would give us five. Four new SUVs and then the Plus, charger. Okay, then the charger. I'd put one in here for probably twenty and get rid of that charger, so and, and like order it at the end of twenty, and, and have it come in in twenty one. He likes it. Doesn't well, he? but I assume yeah. this, way we don't have two this back new together. one is going to replace the charger now. Right. Well, he he said if we put another cop on, we'd still need the five cars. Yeah, so if we and they like the charger, which I don't understand. <laughs> another thing too, if we go ahead and rotate that, that out and uh, say they get a new SUV, we can use that charger within. I mean, sure, we can use it for a administrative car mm -hmm. or something. Just reuse it instead of going. Well, we could, we new could car. give it to the fire department so the chief had a vehicle. He has his own money. money. Hang on, Miss no. Hawkins, you have something? Yeah. yeah, but didn't that? Oh, that's police money. He said no. He didn't want it. And what he was just Wrong saying answer. a second ago. Yeah. <laughs> Wrong answer. If we, if we add a fifth deputy, will we have 24-7 coverage? I don't think it would be exactly 24-7 no. coverage, but it would be close. If we add the six, it would be. But if they add six, it would be Well, how can we change it to get more coverage with the fifth? Because, you know, um, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but mm -hmm. the other night when we had that um, horrible situation up at the rescue the closest deputy was donaldsville because that was a night we didn't have coverage the reason we didn't have coverage that night is our one deputy that would be normally working was on medical leave having a hernia surgery if he would if he would have been on his normal rotation duty he would there would have been a deputy on duty but shouldn't we have somebody cover him when he's not now the contract says yeah. they had to be out x amount of days before they, they have to be out 10 10 days oh, i believe okay. it is yeah. Yeah, we'll have to get into that in the in the budget to figure out how we want to squeeze five or. You guys can do six, but I think six. at that point in time the general fund will have to supplement from that, and we'll mm -hmm. have to see what tax collections come on. Yeah. You know, um, we can and we can we can tell them what we want, but they're unionized employees, so um, we we can only do so much. I mean, if we, if we want six deputies, they'll give us six. Well, no. But we gotta have we gotta have the money to pay for it. I, think I mean, right five, now it's about probably 120, 130,000. Not to interrupt. You, I'm sorry, but just for one deputy. Yeah. So. We but I six. wasn't suggesting a six. Mm -hmm. I was suggesting stretching it with the five. Right. Sure. Um. Just, what's uh, everyone think about? I don't know if we want to get into oh, details yeah. as far the police still the uh, equipment. I know it's been talked about a few years back. Uh, car cameras. Up you guys. I, think I, it's a good I would love to see them. I really would. But wasn't there, someone correct me if I'm wrong, there was an issue with getting the film, not actual film, obviously, but the, the video uploaded to then, their server or something like that because we don't have super high speed here at our building. I think we corrected that. Well, the server. I they think that was fixed, though. Was it? Thing. Yeah. At one time, they had to, to take it over to the county. Right. Physically then we got it. a server or something yeah, here so that I think the county paid for, the sheriff's office paid for. And with with the internet service, it right. downloads here and it just shoots it over there now. Right? Do you want me to reach out? Which is secured. I, that? Me personally, I would love to see it. I mean, I figure more eyes, the better. Uh, well, you are, they, have, they have body cams. Right. And you have a cruiser cam. Right. And I want to say, and don't anyone quote me on this, I know I'm saying that a lot. We have a discussion on this. So it's like, like $15,000, $20,000 out of one of those things. There. I yeah. thought it was like 3600 per car. Was it? Oh. oh. I think by the time that we had to no, do they're, that, they're, well, they're quite the, expensive. The uh, cameras. Well, let's just you know, if you got if you get time, find out what the ballpark price would be. But we I mean, if you if you got a digital camera, which I think they probably are now, because the body their uh, body cams are. Right. Uh, you you know, thirty. I would think thirty would be a little high. You might be able to get one for twenty-five, but you wouldn't want to buy. I don't think a used one in that 
type of equipment either. I mean, it'd be like buying a used bullet, uh, a vest. Is this something we can call you know, the uh, um, probably just call um, the lieutenant up there. They just, I think they just put the policy put one in. So, yeah, I mean, if if you don't mind just getting us a, a you know, a little quote or the car that we're getting for Moody, you guys want to have the camera in it already? The new one coming? Mm -hmm. I, if it's, I, I would think so, yeah. Why not? I mean, I have a question is because the sheriff allowed to say yay or nay to that? No. Well, there are cars. There are cars. We can put whatever we want in them. Okay. And I think the the, by the uh, car cameras, I know a lot of departments are getting away from them probably because of the cost, but the the camera, when you pull, when you they turn those lights on, the camera comes on. It's the way they're wired. And they see everything before that car has ever stopped, what's happening. It also shows everything when that deputy's coming up mm -hmm. because that body cam's only going to go so far. And if it's on. And, well, it, it, they usually turn them on. Soon. Yes, sir. If they're set up only for when the lights come on, most of the deputies, that when they respond to anything in the city, their lights are not on. The... On a stop, yes. On a stop oh. is, is what the body cams are really, I think, more for. But if they, if they run... You know, if, if they turn the lights on, even here in the city, going to these the fire runs and stuff, which they can. if They, they can, but they don't. And for a deputy to turn on his emergency lights in, in Clark County, he has to have the permission of his supervisor that's on duty. Well, I'll tell you, well, let's, I mean, that's all the logistics of it. Let's find out. The, that would be something he could talk about. Let's get some ballpark prices, yeah. and we'll go from there. Do you want to put anything to hold, to place hold it, or is that something you just want to look at, get some pricing, want to get some more information, and possibly amend it down the road? If you think you could do it for thirty thousand, just add thirty thousand in for the cameras. That's what I mean, I'd rather do because that, the police line item is pretty healthy. What do you think? To be with you. you want to put something in there now? Yeah. And you know, if we don't yeah, use it, we don't use it. We don't use it. We don't use it. And another thing, do we have radar units in the cars or not? Do you know? Do okay. We, do we in all of them or just like all one or two? I, I believe they're in all of them. Okay. I was so, just curious. I didn't. I wasn't aware. Grab Shani's name, please. It's throwing me off. You think I'm shammy? Not at all. <laughs> so, no, but I look at her like, so we can go ahead and I think and put it in now, <laughs> and then go off of what kind of pricing so we get. Add it on there. Yeah. Okay. So we'll add uh, cruiser cans. Right. How much? Thirty, I'd say. Uh, well, let's go with forty, and then when he finds out what it is, that can be adjusted, and he, he can make that call tomorrow and find out. But if it's less than forty, I don't think council would have a problem with it. Well, let's go ahead and decide on the number now because I want to get this final version so it's going to be introduced on Monday. Right, but he can make the phone call to the lieutenant tomorrow. Right, but if he, you put 40 in there and he says it's 50, oh. then you guys... I just can't see it being that high. No, I don't no, think I, it's I don't know. 50. I don't, I don't know. So let's just put 30. I say I'm fine with 30. 30. What do you yeah. I don't want to go more than 30. 30, 30, 30. 30 is good. Yeah. 30. 30. 30. No, I'll, i got to call him anyway. I'll take care of it. Thank you. Um, 30. 30. Any questions? So, cruisers already have a dash camera. They don't. They don't. They don't. No. They have a body camera. None of ours do. It hangs here. The cars don't have cameras in them. I think the cameras in it is not only for the deputy safety, but also so they can see whatever is happening, you know, uh, Somebody jumps out, pulls a gun on them. The body cam is only going to see a little bit of it to where the dash cam will see, like, you know, uh, 180, <coughs> not 180, but almost 180 view. Well, not everybody here may know that, Dale, is why I'm trying to explain it. Okay. You got that down, Mr. Bridge? I do. You're the man. The three cams, 30,000. All right. All right. Any other questions on that, please? Okay, um, so uh, streets capital expenses. So this is fund 201, 202, 203, and 204. Uh, since we did see the increase of gas tax, we are expecting uh, some additional revenue. And some of those, I think, two, two out of four of those line items. Um, so any questions on the potential purchases uh, for 2020? Anything you want to add, take away? Are we going to be able to do any streets next year? That'll Yes, I have the plan to do some streets. Okay, that'll be separate. That'll be in the yeah. Yeah, okay. we'll get that in the budget. Okay. The wood chipper is that in conjunction with the other seventeen five? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So you're just buying one, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mr. Kiko, what's the uh, I mean, other than just calling it a weed sprayer, the one you 
I don't know if ours is a tow behind you, know, the one that's got the big tank where they spray the curbs and stuff. Does that work fairly well for what our purposes are? It's the easiest way to do it, yes. Right, no, but I mean, yeah. I've seen some that are a little bit, and I'm not saying over the top fancy, but some that might be a little bit more efficient to do it, or is ours? It takes a wand because some of the curb, we reach behind the curb, bricks, right. everything, so they really can't use a tail bar. We'd, someone's got to run the wand, someone drives and he just sprays. Sounds good. Yep. Cool, that's all I wanted to know. Thank you. Any questions on streets? Anything you guys want to add, take away? A lot of pavement. A lot of pavement. Yeah, like add a lot of pavement. Four or 500,000, you know, to do the street. Pavement. Does that come in a roll? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. Like grass. Yeah. yeah. Come on, roll. Can I two rolls of pavement, please? <laughs> That's at Lowe's. <laughs> kind of heavy. Might have two people. That's right. Awesome. OSHA. All right. Uh, fire and EM, uh, this is EMS capital expenses. Uh, I know Fire Chief and Debbie did a lot of work on this, and it looks fantastic. I think that they're doing a fantastic job of making sure that uh, the employees and citizens are covered. So uh, any questions on the Fire and uh, EMS side of things, I'll definitely direct them down to your end. Um, but I fully support everything that's on here. Chief, I just going to ask you, what are your thoughts? Anything that you see that we... No, what we're looking at really basically is, is outfitting the medic that we purchased with the new load system and the cot. Uh, which is on there for 2020. Um, and then in 2021, we have the same thing, plus a new Lucas tool. But I'm planning on for 21 to apply for the Workman's Comp Grant, which would pay for all three of those, except for 10%. We would be responsible for 10% uh, of that cost. We are not eligible for that grant until 2021 because the city received it in 2014. And we're like I said, we're not eligible until 2021. And that's from basically, it's kind of what's called a give me grant. You put it in the paperwork, you get it. Um, hmm. And they've added the Lucas tool into that for safety reasons because it saves a, fire, uh, a medic from having to stand up in the back of the medic doing CPR going down the road. Um, so if we get that grant, we'll only be responsible for 10% uh, of that. Chief, Chief, is Battalion 52 going to hold up? I'm hoping, but that was one of the things we were just, when we were talking, when you were talking about the cruisers, what I was talking about for that charger is if we can get that charger, I would like to use it as our battalion vehicle. And then, then when we go to buy a new vehicle in 22 or 23, uh, battalion vehicle, buy a new one then, and then that that charger can flip over to either staff car vehicle or that or something like that if it's still usable. Wasn't there concern about not needing the battalion vehicle or one of the vehicles? I, I, I could be misspeaking. I thought we had a discussion mm -hmm. about you potentially getting away with that because it really didn't serve. Because what? For battalion? No, no. Uh, the battalion vehicle is definitely a need. Even if our plan goes through like we're, what we're, our long range plan is. Um, our long-range plan for the department right now is within the next four years to have this station man with four people. And out of that four people, one person would respond, the senior person on duty would be responsible to be a chase car vehicle, basically that the battalion vehicle. Uh, and that will allow me to put two medics in the street and also a four-man engine company if we have fire. Okay. Well, oh, Mr. Lindsay. The, uh the new medic we ordered, I thought we had money in that to to buy this cot. No, that so was when it come in, it would be what it ready is. To go. We bought the, we bought the, the medic unit itself mm -hmm. out of 19 money, mm -hmm. and we're buying the cot and the load system out of 20 money because the medic won't be finished and ready to have that installed until 20. Do you know a date yet or a no? We're probably looking at month? we won't deliver probably until April May time frame. Okay, and it'll be a 20 model then. Basically, yeah. Okay. Awesome. Uh, it'll be on a Ford F50, uh, uh, 550 chassis, four-wheel drive chassis. Nice. Awesome. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions <coughs> for Chief? Are we still looking at an engine or not? That's in Fire Capital. Okay. Turn we to haven't page. got to it. Okay. <laughs> Does anyone have any questions on uh, EMS side of things? No? no. All right. And in the fire. Wow. So $100,000 a year for the fire engine. Again, that's just saving it up for the purchase later on down the road. Doesn't mean we're going to buy it in 2020 and make $100,000 a year payments on it. 
And that'll be like paying cash for one and with mm -hmm. 400,000 of it and cover it in 23. If we buy in 23, that would, it, it may not pay the whole, 400,000 may not pay the whole thing. We might be able to put some money with it at that time to it. Okay. But that would at least pay the majority of it. Right now, if you're looking at a new engine, what we're looking at is a rescue rescue engine. Um, price range right now is in between four four $450,000. That's just for the apparatus. What about the equipment? Another what we would do is thousand for equipment. Or? We would take basically take the equipment that's on engine fifty two now, transfer it, transfer it to that engine, and I would have it in the budget for that year. Buying the engine, also buying new uh, power tools. Uh, basically, when I say power tools, I mean uh, jaws. Jaws a lot. Uh, but what we're looking at buying at that time is all new battery operated yeah, sure, sure. Um, power tools, jaws, spreaders, cutters, rams. They'll all be battery operated instead of the hydraulic. Mm -hmm. We'll still keep our hydraulic set as a backup, but with the um, technology improvements with the battery-operated tools, it's the way to go. Um, they're more versatile, more mobile. We can take them inside of a building if we need to. Uh, and also, too, with the batteries, that, the ones that we're looking at, um, we can go down to Lowe's and buy another, uh, another battery if we need to and not have to purchase it through the company. Will we hold on to the engine we have? Uh, yeah, we'll keep it as a res as a backup reserve engine. Um, my only problem at that time will be where to house it. What's that? What would I mean? I know you probably can't give. It. What's that engine worth if we were to sell it in four years? In four years, that engine will be twenty five years old. <laughs> but, I mean, you got to. I mean, just a ballpark of what it might be worth. No, because at I that mean, time, what, what, less than fifty thousand. Oh, you're probably going to be yeah. you're five ten thousand. Really? Yeah. If you're yeah. Lucky. You're, yeah, yeah if you're with lucky. an it with. <sighs> Wow. Right now, there's so much surplus. I think it looks well, great. not only surplus, and, and but service what OSHA, NFPA, and every, all the standards are now for engines. Buying old engines, you see them online all the time. But what, mainly, the people that are buying them are collectors, and the, they're not paying that much money. The ladder for works years. really good. Yeah. The what? The ladder. Oh, the ladder truck. Yeah, the ladder truck's fine. Um, <laughs> Is, is the quit paid for now? Would be yes, paid for yes, this year is. or next year? She gets the gold star, but yes, it is. <laughs> awesome. Yes, it is. And that's what's allowing us to look at doing what we're doing. Uh, is the ladder truck being paid off? Um, paying cash for this medic is putting us in a really, really good spot. And when we look at specking out a new engine, we, this gives us that time frame to actually spec one out that meets the city because in my opinion in the past 10 years what apparatus was bought for the city was bought under under what is used or what they what was needed for mutual aid and we need to stop doing that and start buying equipment for what the city needs mm -hmm. okay makes sense to me anything else gentlemen ladies no. No. all right any any plans and then we'll move on any plans for at some point in the future of expanding the building Yes, sir. It's in the it's in the fire cap or fire uh, uh, operating. We put in one for this year, twenty five thousand to have the roof inspected because if you can see, we're starting to develop leaks, um, and we also want a uh, to get someone in this year to look at the station. Um, no one can give me a firm yes or no. Uh, supposedly, when the when the station was built, what was the add addition onto the station? Um, some part of this building was supposed to have been built to where it could be additioned up with a second story. Mm. And we want to find out, is that true? Is that possible? Um, because we definitely need to expand the station and we need to upgrade the station um, with the different things that we're having to look at, especially with male and female uh, living quarters. Right now, our bunk rooms barely, barely meet um, standards. If you look at actual NFPA code standards, every firefighter is supposed to have 100 square foot of, of uh, private living space. Jeez. Well, okay. go so I'd recommend that we, we would go up because if you take that down, mm -hmm. that's going to be parking. Yeah. So you, right. you know, that, really the only way you can go is up. Right. That's, you know, that, and the only option we would have if, if that came down would be to maybe extend out 12 feet or maybe, you know, or so much feet this way. Again, then you're taking it you're right back to the same thing of taking the parking lot right. away. Uh, when when this station was built, it was planned for this area here. Right. Every, I think this this wall forward to go back. up. To have to have second floor. Right. Um, yeah. 
then we, you know, we, could, we would have to look at what we can do as far as what we would put where. Um, basically, what I would like to see done is maybe um, office space and that type of thing put on the, first, on the second floor. Because um, when you go in to put any living quarters and that type of thing on the, on the second floor, you have to look at emergency exit down for the firefighters for calls. And flag or uh, slide poles are no longer an option. Oh, man. man, that was I was gonna like say you guys bring it back the fire pole. Uh, oh, I would love to. I would love to have a have a pole. The only other option we would have would be um, uh, a slide. Only if you don't move and you hit the which ground. Which I have been in houses and worked out of houses that do have fire slides. That's awesome. Uh, which we had one in Van Day and it was awesome. It's okay until you hit it with your rubber boots, and it throws yeah. you off the yeah. slight face. Or the guy below you didn't move. All right. But, uh, yeah, but like I said, we do have it at, at, at the um, fire operating for the, uh, for the next um, four years of a 25, 25, 25, 12, 50, or 12, 5, 12, 5, uh, to do station remodels, because there's other things in this station, even with, without building an addition, uh, things that has to be done. All the carpet in the station needs to be completely ripped out and the floor from back door to front door replaced and uh, tiles replaced and as like mr kiko was saying we want to replace all the lights in the station to go to leds and the <coughs> furnishing in here needs to be completely replaced these tables are junk um but we are looking at you know doing what came to each year and then when the, the 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 normal things that we have the twenty five thousand each year for bunker gear uh, that's just to keep us rotating. That way we don't go to a point where we don't have any backup uh, gear. If, if the substation... Hang on, hang on Mr. Lindsay. Oh. Mr. Cook. If we're, if we're talking about the possibility of tearing the substation down, has there been any thought to the possibility of um, taking a space downtown in one of the... Uh, Let's say abandoned. I won't say abandoned storefronts. <laughs> one of the it. empty storefronts. Take it. <laughs> uh, ballpark. I don't have any idea of what we're talking about. Are you about a new place for the police? I think if he's doing renovations, we put him in here. Oh, if it was big. Well, they don't no, do a lot of no. Stuff. I, uh, I don't. Back. No. I don't agree with with that. No, you don't. But, you don't but if if stuff. if we can rent a space downtown, now I. Possibly, I have no idea. Do you, Dale, what going storefronts going for downtown? Well, didn't we at the last meeting we talked about the potential idea of the getting the old city building. building and putting the police there? Yeah, there's still a lot of it. I just don't feel I don't. Right. I, mean, I don't know the necessity of abandoning, even though it's not the base place. We have money to do some remodels in there, like just cheap carpet and something on the wall to make it better. But we don't pay any rent to stay there. I don't understand why we would abandon that place to run a place downtown. So I, I understand the outside the box thinking, but we're going to put some hardwood floor in there for dirt cheap, get the carpet out, put the front paint up until we figure out what the long term solution is that is. Mm -hmm. Well, when that second floor comes in, you're going to have a problem. I'm, I'm right there with you. It's definitely a necessity. It needs to get done. Hopefully, um, nobody's on the Yeah, there's, just so many, there's, so many, there's so many options for the police as far as putting them with council with toys, you know, if that ever thing comes up. Or we have the option to. We put a bit, uh, put an offer in on our current city building and move the police there. So there's a lot that can happen with that. Um, I would I would love that too if that was a, if you know if everything fell into place. You're coming into town and boom, there's your police station that kind of sets a presence maybe. Well, I, I you know I, 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 in theory it's a great idea. I maybe the cook would see it for leave. our four or the five deputies. The it's the race to be. <laughs> would see it but other leave. deputies use that substation right. that are not contracted to the city of New Carlisle. Yeah. And we pay the bills over there. We pay the electric. We pay the water. We pay the technology. We pay all that. So I don't want no one to come in. That if we would buy our current city building for the sheriffs, for our, we need to make sure that it's for our use. For our. For our use. Right. I'm not saying we don't want to be a good community player. Right. And be resourceful for other people, but we can't do that as a loss to our taxpayers. All right. The. Uh, I thought Mr. Cook was going to ask the question when he was talking about the building next door, but if that building would ever come down, is there any plans that possibly in the future building a bay on the outside of this wall far enough to put, because at some point you're going to need more space. You know, when you buy that new engine, you got to have an engine that, what are you going to do, park it outside? 
Well, that wouldn't last long. Somebody will have it. It would fit in the present engine space. Mm -hmm. It would fit. But the engine sitting there now. Like I said, that will that will have to look at it. if we keep the engine mm -hmm. as a reserve engine, then we would have to look at a, somewhere to store it. Um, if you know, or we may not even end up keeping it as a reserve engine. Um, but as far as putting a bay on that side of the station, it's a possibility. But if we were going to extend that side of the station, I'd much rather see it be used for um, office and crew member space. At some point. At some point, I think that the city's, we're a new fire the city's going to have to build a new fire station somewhere, and the and, or add on to this one. And if they add it on to this one, you could always put space up above it also for offices or living or whatnot. And then I don't know, some engineer could tell you how to connect it to if right. if you add on to this one. Right. Uh, that way, the quint would make a good backup even though it's 25 years old or will be the it can still be used as a backup but it can't be the main line right that's where you know keeping per se old engine 52 what we have now as a reserve if we did not have the quint we would definitely have to keep it mm -hmm. but since we have the quint the quint can be used as a backup engine because it has a pump it has a water tank on it uh, and that truck i i foresee that truck lasting well longer than than 10 more years how, how, how much water is that pump does the quint carry is it the quint 500 carries or 1015 the quint carries 350 gallons of tank 50 right um, but it can hook the hydrant and then be, right. because I, again I as a pumper again looking at the city we are all that the city is entirely hydrated we can hit a hydrant mm -hmm. even if we got a dead hydrant our next hydrant is only 350 feet away mm -hmm. uh, so the quint can easily tie into a water source okay um that's the reason with the new engine we're looking from going from a thousand gallons down to 750. The, the levy we put on, and I'm, I, 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 I just want to make sure my recollection is like, was that a perpetual or was it a five year? Five year. Has there been any discussion about saving some money? Um, because we don't know if that levy is going to pass when it's right. Again. That's that's the and reason if we're doing all these renovations. You got all this money put out at some point now. If you go to put a second story on this thing, it's going to be way more than what the price. Oh, yeah, of course. Like I said, this is what we've got in here right now is just renovations of what we have now. Sure. Um, but all this, I mean, hopefully, the fine. I mean, you guys were working together to save some of this money because right. the moment that levy would not get renewed, which I don't think it will because it's a safety levy, I'm sure I have no problem. But if it doesn't. Your funds were running pretty close. Right, exactly. That, and so, that's the reason with with purchasing the new medic cash, we're not looking at buying any large apparatus yeah. for the next two, and three And I understand that. I, I appreciate that. But I also think that we should be saving some money just in case in year right. six that we have the for yeah, oh, definitely. or whatever the case may definitely. be. Definitely. Sure. Got it. Definitely. Fantastic. All right. Anything else on this page? Moving on. All right. So now we're on to water operating. Well, Howie just needs to find ways to cut this. It's not happening. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is your water. <laughs> Howie's head just went. <laughs> um, so the thing what we want to do with our water plant is we want to maintain it. One of our newer plants, we don't want to get um, below, behind on repairs. We want to keep up on that. I think I always done a good job with this. He can explain uh, anything in detail if needed. Um, we do have the repayment to the general fund in there, so that's going off in one, two, three years. And then we have the maintenance program, and it does drop down to the fifty-three thousand on twenty twenty-four um, because at that point in time it is just maintenance cost. No, I'm sorry, it's the last payment of the actual term of the agreement. Then after that, it's maintenance cost. Yeah, I can tell you the rehab high service pump building now is reduced to five. That was six. That was fifteen thousand and nineteen and fifteen thousand and twenty. We were able to come with some. We found another vendor to be able to help us out with valves. So they are ordering as we speak fifteen thousand dollars worth. So now we were able to save ten thousand on that project. So we were able to lower that for twenty. And I think the only thing new on here from last year is the industrial pipe saw. And correct me if I'm wrong. Yes. So it pretty much looks like minus the numbers. There's been, the only addition to the new item has been the industrial pipe. I like the idea of the, can you talk on the new well field just a little, Howie? We are trying to put some back for the new well field to have an alternate well field. If for some reason um, it, this well field, because 235 is close, 
there, if there is to be a chemical Astro. spill, mm -hmm. um, it basically it can contaminate the whole thing. There are ways to go about that. They drill another well or they'll use one well to keep that plume um, tight. But yeah, this is to have an alternate. Our alternate options are not great. So we're trying to put plenty back for the future to possibly put it because it could be a good distance away from our plant. Okay. Thank you. And a new box utility truck is to start replacing that van they have. Um, it's been kind of hopping around a little bit from departments. Okay. Council. Would that work better than a van? Mm-hmm. Okay. Carry more stuff or more uh, organized? It, yeah, you'd be a utility box with a cover on it, like you see uh, yeah. vendors have where you can walk in it and have stuff on the outside. Mm -hmm. Council, any other questions <clears throat> for water? When do you think the Adam Street Tower will come down? It's not. It's not. Ooh, hold it a while. I don't want to deal with that drama. <laughs> <laughs> it's, com it's coming down eventually. Yeah, it, it may. It may, we on, may take it down. <laughs> what did I like yeah. that water tower, man. I think it's the coolest thing. Don't get me wrong, but from a maintenance and operational standpoint, which this is like the TVA in Tennessee, the first thing it does is generate power. All those homes that float on there, that's secondary. Same thing here with me, being a licensed operator. It's a great site, but what was it built for? To provide water pressure. And if and it doesn't have water, it'll rest out for, quicker. Uh, I know I'm yeah. close to work when I see the water tower. And I got That's my right. left on the block. <laughs> Remember, Jim Bubba we'd said a redo, restaurant. We'd have to redo all the signs <laughs> coming into Remember? the city because the water tower's on there. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, that's for another discussion. That's we can problem. battle Howie on that one. <laughs> yeah. All right. Any no questions on uh, any other questions? Further comments on water? We'll jump over to wastewater operating. This does encompass three funds: 502, 560, and 562. Uh, any questions can be uh, directed to Mr. Kitko. We're replacing. Go no, ahead. no. Go ahead. We're replacing quite a bit at the wastewater plant now, aren't we? As far as the I don't know what the stuff's called. The thing that goes like this, the elevator, what's uh, bar screen. Yeah, oh, bar, is that screen. A bar screen. Okay. Yeah, it actually should be here within three weeks. The pump is in. Um, those are going to be start up on the screen is scheduled right now for December 18th and 19th. So this two year project will be completed in mid December. Okay. Um, and then the primary clarifier, I got you know got the agreements done now, but that's the hundred sixty thousand because by the time we get it in and everything, it's going to be twenty twenty. Is it going to cost the one whole one sixty? I know you right earn now it's, that much, but you thought it would come in cheaper. Well, right now the it is at one forty nine five hundred okay. some dollars, okay. but we have to go in case we get in there and some unseen things will come. Right. Up. Yep. Okay. Mr. Kitko, is this, I think we passed it already, but I'm going to ask, I'm pretty sure it was streets, the, uh, the pump, that pump truck we bought a few years back for... No, that's for this one. Is that for this? Sewer jet. Sewer, thank you. That's for this? The back truck? Yeah. Is that doing all right? Oh, oh, it's great. Um, we just had some, uh, you know, some engine work done to it, but that thing has been, uh, I don't know how the city did not do what we did and keep up with stuff without a truck like that. Good. I mean, granted, it was used. Um, we're going to keep babying it, but a lot of things on it are doing well. We've replaced some equipment on it, um, but it has been, it has saved a lot of things that we do um, with that truck. Good. Good to hear. Thank you. Anything else, Council? All right. Yep. Yes, sir. All right. Uh, full capital spend. I think this is our last week. Oh, and real quick, that is paid off uh, in 2020, too. The, the back, back truck's less payment is 2020. What year was that again? Okay. It is a 98. Okay. Thank you. Did so that's the one we bought from City of Union. Union. Yeah. Union. Okay. And it's still running. <laughs> Didn't they rebuild that or something just before we got it? Uh, they spent almost sixty or seventy thousand on it three or four years before we bought it, mm -hmm. and we paid a hundred for it. So nice. it's good for what another four or five, ten years maybe. Yeah, the goal is to get, I would like to get another minimum five, get close to 10 and start budgeting here in about five years to get us a, a new one down the road. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. <clears throat> All right, pool fund 505. Um, I just threw a number in there. I don't, I just wanted the placeholder. I know they're carrying over, I think they ended up with a quite a positive balance um, because it was transferred in a little sooner than what we normally did, which is completely okay. 
um, but I did not um, know what needed to be done for the pool this year. I did not uh, communicate with Howie when I did this, uh, so I just kind of threw a number in there. So, Mr. Kiko, glad you're coming. Uh, what needs to be done at the pool? Um, it's really what our main concern is, trying to tighten up the leak issue. Mm -hmm. We've had a couple vendors in, and it's ranging anywhere from twenty dollars to $40,000 to take care of the leaks. Obviously, if it gets so extreme that it's just unfeasible to do, we'll have to really take a close look at it. Um, building has been completely remodeled. We have some few minor things that will be need to be taken care of. But what we're worried about is pump. Uh, things that run solid for during those three months, they will have to do boiler is new, so we should have not any boiler issues, but our main concern really is uh, if a pump and that motor go out, that runs about five grand. So we always have to have five grand in for that thing. Um, other than that, I don't know of any major uh, repair or replacement of anything that is of significance. Uh, I do. I would like to add a security camera, a security system, because I think that we need to have that full covered uh, for liability purposes. Inside and out? Inside and out. Um, what do you think that would cost? I mean, what type do you think? Are you thinking of hardwire? Or it's going to have to be something that's going to have to DVR it? record itself for X amount of days. Yeah. You're going to have to have indoor, mix of indoor and outdoor cameras. The auditor, uh, I, well, I don't want to say the auditor, I mean, they've always on it, but we need to, one, protect the cash that goes out of there. Mm -hmm. We have no indication anyone's done anything, but they like to see cash being protected. Mm -hmm. um, I don't want to put the employees in a sense, like in their break room. I don't think that should be covered, but I think the parking lot should be covered. I think yeah. that the actual pool should be covered. Um, and I think the entrance and exits to the building need to be covered, hands down. But that is going to be a mixture of indoor, outdoor cams. We may have to up the internet for the speeding purposes, if it's run off Wi-Fi. Um, we can probably get it for under the $2,100. Um, 2100 Well, that's the cutoff for the capital purchase. Anything oh. under 2100 is not considered a capital purchase. We don't have to report it. So, I mean, we can put that, we can just cover that under full maintenance, too. If you guys want to keep the 25000 in there, you have to give it a little more leeway. But I would like to see it. And, and uh, April, what's your opinion on this? I mean, you're the manager. You have to deal with it. Oh, yeah. They would? Okay. The, Just the, you can go back and review stuff? Yes. Okay. I guess the one question I would have since the pool manager is sitting here, what would you like to see done? What do you think needs to be done at the pool? I want some ideas. Either. Or not. I mean, this whole thing's pretty much a went with. Yeah, I think the vendor we had in it wasn't going to be that. that would, yeah, somewhere in there, maybe. Gotcha. Okay. So, so note that for your uh, budget you stuff. How old are you? How old? How old? Uh, 51 years old. It's almost at the end of his life. Yeah, no, we're good with well, that. So. What's council's thought on um, putting a privacy fence around the pool perimeter? Do you have any complaints of people just walking down the street and looking at people or anything making people unawkward, uncomfortable? I mean, the fencing for what it is, it's not going to keep anybody out, but... It's more of a I privacy mean, thing for the people inside. I also have some parents, and I have a grandparent that brings her children. She's disabled, she's on oxygen, so she sits in her car at the fence while her Ugh. grandkids are in swimming. She doesn't want to get out and come in. Stays in their conditioning sure. car and she can see them. Just a thought. They drive by. So that is, you know, 
fact that it's open and parents can comfortably drive by. I see all my kids here, my kids not here, whatever. So. That's a good point. Gotcha. I would I would think that having it open also makes it inviting. Inviting. Yeah. Blue water. You know, you see yeah. water oh, is blue. All those people having fun. <laughs> I mean, it yeah. it's true. <laughs> all right, I'm about ready to say it. Ready? Done. Water slide. I. We need a water slide. We need one. <laughs> That's. We get one for what? Fifteen twenty. I was gonna. <laughs> I was gonna say. It's Probably 25. Oh, I thought there would be way more than that. Get like park equipment. Mm -hmm. The I would. I mean, that's our. That's our. That's not ours. That's the. That's one of the biggest things there. But you know, I mean, you get people saying, "Well, there's nothing here. It's a pool, right?" We said it's a pool. It's, it's, a pool. it's not a. It's not the aquatic. It's, it's not a. It's right. It's not a water park. It's not an aquatic center. Is but slide gone? we've got a slide. It's, it's water. you know, it's oh. it's this tall from the ground. Yeah, it's not very big. Okay. Um, I, w I would love, a, you know, I think everyone would love to see, it. and there's plenty of, there's plenty of edge room. I mean, you know, there's, that, that pool is massive. I mean, it is the, probably one of the biggest pools around, but um, yeah, I would love to see a, a slide someday. That's up to you guys, but um, I, I do want to ask you that. She'd gotten a quote from, I don't know that name that company was, to, to reline it. It was like, yeah, I, it, I got the, what, do you, what do you think of that? Seriously, I mean, it was um, like seventy-three thousand. Yeah, I, I got the quote, and I know we talked to that guy one time, and it comes down to that surface that's underneath because it moves. Right. And since we have such negative pressure, he said usually it's not an issue. However, I know better with bladders and adhesion to concrete if the surface is not one hundred percent stable. Yeah. And we do have quite a bit of negative pressure in that deep end. Yeah. I, I love the line, the whole thing. The, what what we were looking at just for the deep end is it's lining on the back side. So it's it's a it's darn near permanent. They use it for casting manholes. So it's the same thing as that. It's good for I wouldn't say life, but right. I'd love to do it all in one. But. We're still doing concrete repair every year. Yeah. I mean, and that and that will still and that's our problem. It shifts so much, mm -hmm. especially during cold. See where splash zone is built up out of the water table. You know, they they empty theirs, it stays dry. Yeah. We can't do that with ours because ours has a pressure relief in the deep end. So yeah, when you get into liners and stuff, and they get on site and they see different things of how things shift, and it's you gotta be very careful. It's a lot of money. Mm -hmm. Could they do a simulation of stabling the deep end while doing the liner? You no, know, it, it's just where it's sitting. I think when we, we talked with them, there was quite a bit of stuff because it sits in the water table, deep in the water table. Yeah. Go ahead. Let me ask, can we relocate our deep end? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. You, could, oh, no, yeah. Yeah. You, you can buy some land on up the road and build a brand new pool. If you have enough and, money, you can do anything you want. If we go off to the back right, I'm not trying to be funny, I'm being completely serious. If we, if we dig out a hole and we put some men in it, we make it the whole pool is in. Because the creek's right there. Right there. Right there. We go down, we sit down in it. You kind of need a sump pump under the deep end to keep the water out of it during the winter months. <laughs> Which I don't think you can do. I don't know. It's like forty thousand for a block. It seems like half to fix, and then you have eighty thousand yeah. dollars fix that can do yeah. this. But if you need eighty thousand well, fix, you still got to take care of the deep end that's moving. So it's just like, what's the and, and what's another the best thing? Way forward? How old is this pool? I, I fifty-one. fifty-one. It'll be fifty-two American this year. Be fifty is fifty-two years old. So the pool, by being fifty-two, is almost at the end of its life cycle. Is that not correct? It, well, by by uh, engineering terms, it has passed its right. life cycle. Oh, yeah. yeah, 52, yes. So at some point, the pool, again, just my opinion, is going to become another money pit because we're constantly going to have to throw money into it. I'm not advocating to close it down. So, you know, just a second, April. <laughs> I can feel her burning those eyes in them. At some point, if we're going to keep a pool, we're going to have to look at in the future, I don't know how far in the future, of building a new pool, either ripping this one out and, well, you, we have water problems there now, so you probably wouldn't want to build it back there, but it would have to go someplace else or put a, what do they call that, a spice pad thing in. I don't know. I don't know. You know, those are like a hundred and some thousand dollars. 
I know uh, uh, Speedway, Speedway over in Springfield, they paid for one of that's over there in Snyder Park, didn't they not? That's what I had heard. Do you know anything about that? I, I, I remember the, there too, but I don't know if it's actually true or not. There was a partial yeah. grant for partial. that one. Oh, was there? And I don't know, is there grants out there to replace the pool? Uh, typically, the, typically there is not. It takes a donation of a private organization okay. to help fund that. But I can tell you, Thomas Cloud Park and Huber, the splash pad they have, that was 216000 It's not a, That one's not a big one. Yeah, that's very Oh, wow. It's not. In my experience, they still tend to be a money pit because there's nobody there monitoring yeah. it. And so it gets destroyed. It's messed it up. And you have no income. From and your and your liability is probably yeah. higher too. So money and chemicals going into the water, but you have no income. We have income at a daily gate. Yeah. And and another thing, I don't know what council thinks or wants to do with it, but they maybe there ought to be a line item for maintenance. Uh, I know you got pool maintenance here, but a line item for other things that wants to be done that's not related to the pool like the cement or there's other things in the bathroom I know she told me there, she would there like is. to there's get a budget done. line item under pool maintenance that covers okay. the hot water so that tank. don't need to be in the, in the CIP yeah they like the water tank plumbing we, well, it goes in CIP it, 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 if it, it's the dollar amount so if it's what? if he needs a hot water heater that's twenty two hundred dollars it's going to be considered a capital purchase right if it's Two thousand dollars is not considered a capital purchase. But if in the future, because eventually this pool is going to just collapse, it's just a matter of time. It could be another fifty years. The goal is to put money, a little bit of money, into it every year to maintain it, so it does not become a Madison school where it has had no money put into it, and then all of a sudden it's falling apart and it's beyond repair. And I feel like we've slowly been turning it around the last few years to where it's no longer on that downward slope. It's on its way. Well, personally, I think you've done an awesome job on turning the pool around mm -hmm. because I know in 15, I was a very big advocate of shutting it down. And in 16, uh, council at that time decided to give it one more year. And I don't know, you made like five thousand fifty two hundred dollars, which was, you know, you lost forty thousand. What was it, fifteen or fourteen or fifteen? I forget. Mm -hmm. And then to come back, you know, a year later and and to tell a profit tells me somebody wasn't handling the money right or something wasn't going on the way it should have been going. Uh, and I think you've done an awesome job in what you've done with the pool. We have the meets, the swim meets and stuff there now. I think we have a swim team. I believe, uh, you know, stop me if I say something that isn't correct. Uh, we have newer equipment that that uh, was bought from, I don't even know where you guys went and got it from. And new bathrooms. And we have new bathrooms, but they're still working the bathrooms that that I understand that, that she would like to get done that may not fall under pool maintenance. I mean... And maybe I'm just babbling. You mean, I don't know. You mean capital expense, right? Yeah, yeah, but yeah, it'd be a, a non-capital expense. Yeah. I think I don't know what. Hang on, just what it would second. be. Dale, did you have something? I've been told the pool property goes down New Claw by quite a ways. We've had somebody ask about that recently. It goes, it goes to the tornado siren. Basically, that's the property line right there. Then a little bit of woods might be in the city, but the rest is uh, another private owner. Yeah. I have a question. Was you good, Dale? Um, you know how, um, like, the capital expenses has like twenty-five thousand a year for a new structural firefighting gear, um, or say you could have that towards a new fire station, but it's like twenty-five thousand a year. Could you do something like that towards the expense you know that's coming up for the pool, like? The, 500 for safety equipment or, or whatever. Or I need a new, I need an AED. I don't have an AED. I had been borrowing one from the fire department. What is it? Um, it's the Clear. Yeah. Oh, okay. And the one that we had borrowed. About 2,000, I think, 2,500. Children and most of oh. our people children. Mm -hmm. So we need, a, we need an AED. Not that. Deployed. What are those so costs? So we need to add that to the capital. Because that's clearly going to be over twenty one hundred dollars. Well, yeah, you're looking at about twenty six, twenty seven hundred dollars for an AED. Are they that much okay. now? I was thinking yeah. about twenty. The reason being is because most AEDs now are equipped to be able to use for adults and children both, mm -hmm. which that's what she needs. And, and, and those are actually required, I think, uh, 
So I should put three thousand in there to save the thing. Well, yeah, three thousand would cover it. Three thousand would cover that. But that should be bought before the pool opens next no. week. No, it's no, not required. No, Pardon but, it's, but you should have it. It's yeah, it's strong. strong oh, the AED? Yeah. 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 Oh, that, that should not be a discussion. No, that no, should that should be done. Discussion. We're getting one. I'm putting Chief. three thousand in there. Are we okay with that? Yeah, Chief. Yeah. Go ahead, Chief. Along with her AED, one thing you have to understand with that AED, you also incur a maintenance contract for those, for that yeah. AED. And what we can look at doing is having their AED put under our maintenance contract and won't call it should not increase our maintenance contract well if it does let me know because then we have to worry about your levy funds paying for her right exactly what i'm saying yeah, i, I don't think it will get there all right what else in the pool needs to be put in because last year i think that we failed to put a lot of things in the pool and we, right. or it wasn't clear enough so i just want to make sure everyone's on the same page with that. i mean i think every few years we need to we need a new few new tubes this year like our tubes new umbrellas yeah um, and, and those are we can do this under maintenance um they're hundreds, fifty dollars, hundred dollars chairs, things like that. Mm -hmm. Howie, what do you think of? That's not kind. Of, what do you think of your filters? I mean, is your, I mean, uh, just when I mean, are you okay there? They're, they're sand, yeah. I mean, we never know when one could go out. I mean, they're fiberglass to get the sun, chlorine, chemicals, and then when one goes, we go get a new one. Okay. Is so that for the pump? You said they sit outside. They're the filters. How much the is the pump? The pump runs. Um, I think it was forty-five hundred for yeah, the last one. Forty-five. <laughs> Okay, do we want to keep the pump into the general pool maintenance description, or we have a separate line on for the pump? Uh, I, a, whichever way it would work better, I would think. And put, well, here's the thing with that. If you don't earmark it right now, 25000 pool maintenance, we can go out and spend 24999 on everything but a pump. Okay. And then, well, then, we need, then, then put it line then, item a pump in. Yeah, because, I mean, the pump's pump. a pretty crucial piece of equipment. Yeah. It's <laughs> temperamental. If we don't need it, we yeah. You don't use it. Now, with that being said, if we had 5000 in for the pump, do you want to take 25000 off the full maintenance? Could it, could it be pump equipment, and that would include the pump, the filter, the, I don't know what other parts, the chlorinator, if you have a chlorinator on it, which yeah. I think you so, do. I mean, wouldn't that all fall under the under that? What's wrong? I'm trying, to, I'm trying to figure out the quality because it's repair and maintenance you when, know, you're, when you're replacing well, an existing. You know, when we're talking about all these other smaller items, when we go to do the actual appropriation budget, budget that's where we can make sure that we put enough money in these repairs. But it's not earmarked at that point in time. You put it in the CIP and well, just because if it's. it's a, is it, you're considering it because it's at a certain dollar limit to be in the CIP? Yeah, that, and I think that if you put in the CIP, like it's earmarked. If you just put it in a line item, it doesn't mean it's going to get spent. It can be used on anything under the sun as long as it qualifies as that line item. Last year, there was a lot of confusion about this full CIP. This year, I want to make it solid. So it's, it's laid out. I wouldn't even have a problem putting a miscellaneous line in the CIP for... Yeah, but then who decides this, this, how to spend this, it? This may, this, this may not sound right, but for whatever the manager thinks that she needs, <laughs> there'd be money there that she could come to you and say, hey, can we do this? Or, or she can say, hey, mm -hmm. you know, I want to, I'd like to spend some of this money to buy, I don't know, maintenance. If you're, just if a pump whatever. Out and you buy a new pump. New sand. You're, buying a new pump. you're not repairing yeah. or maintaining yeah. an existing pump. So if your pump under repair and maintenance would not qualify because you're actually buying a new pump. It's not like you're repairing the pump that's already there. It would be a whole new purchase. Right. So that would be a new capital purchase. So would that have to be in the CIP? Absolutely. or Well, then I would put how much did the pump cost last year or last time we replaced one? Mm -hmm. Then we just replaced it one. It was about 5000 Like last year? 5, so if it was 5000 I'd put six in there for a pump. And related equipment. That way it covers well, anything else it would need. Filter, but if the pump, if if like the pump yeah. goes and you spend the money on that, that only leaves you, it could take the whole 6000 for the pump in another year with the way things go up. You see what I'm saying? So if you're going to add related equipment, you might want to look when at... When we were discussing doing improvements, you wanted to leave 5000 in there just in case something happened to the pump. Therefore, it didn't free up money to purchase other things that you're needing. So that's what he's saying. Put mm -hmm. it in there to free up. In the other, in the line item in the budget. Yeah, if it's just a repair, then we won't use the one for the new one. Does that make sense? We, yeah, if you if you if, if you need to buy twenty dollars worth of seals for it or whatever, that then you you take it out of that. If you need the whole thing, then find a whole brand new one. You're take not it out of the general fund. That's a brand new capital purchase. Right. 
So that needs to be a line item in the CIP. If it's used, great. If not, then it just it carries there. over. But at least it's earmarked for a pump right. for that amount of money. Okay. Can you go with that? Go with that? Go with that? So, so you looked at it five or six thousand for that right pump. Put five but I can change it to whatever you guys want me to do Wait, every things go up every year so I would rather have six thousand in there and not need it than to put five thousand in there and need fifty five hundred I mean does that make sense I mean, it does. we have a price them in a couple of years like I, six would probably be closer to covering it let's do seven oh. okay that way if it doesn't we'll just carry it over and, and, Think so. well, we got labor costs might go up. We don't we don't know what's changed in past. Well, years. didn't the city put the last one in? Yeah, we, we put we, we, we put them in. in. Yeah. No. So you, you, I mean, you still have labor costs, but not <coughs> by having an outside labor come it's in and do it. You know, another company coming and do it. Sure. But are, are we covering miscellaneous things that may come up that that she would like to get or if that's the case, you know need or or whatever? I, we we have know. the line item for repair and maintenance. That if they need to repair something that's already there, that's fine. She what if she wants item. to buy something new that well, then she need, is only a couple of $300? So we can, well, well, if it's only a couple of $300, that's not, that's I mean, need to go into CIP. well, right. I understand that. But if she finds something, and I have no idea what it would be. But that could be a line item line, on the budget. It's a line line in the budget. So when okay. the budget, they'll have to get together okay. and find that, that good number to get them through the year. Okay. Yeah. Do, do we need so to So now, so what I'm trying to say is, like, we're, we pass it with the AD and a pump. And then, you know, midway through the year, she has some capacity come in that's not in the budget. We'll just have to do what we did with the trucks. We'll just re reopen the CIP, add the item in there for whatever she needs, and then put it in through council and just okay. redo it. So do I think she has some good item. ideas, and I think it's not going to cost, you know, lots of money, like thousands of dollars, but it could cost, you know, four or 5000 I think that if we're going to have the pool, it should be presentable. Right. As long as the pool's making money, we need to improve. Well, it, 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 right now, it's making money. $27,000 is making money. We've got to put money yeah. back in. You know, we got to keep the people coming back in. Well, that's, She's done a great job of getting people in the gates. I, the only, I want to touch on a couple things, and I, for obvious reasons, I won't get into anything too deep on this exact subject, obviously. But... Um, one, you mentioned cameras. I think it's a great idea because every year she gets somebody who steals somebody's shoes or somebody's <laughs> wallet. I'm serious. It, it, I'm gonna put, it probably, happens. I'm going to put 5000 in for security. Okay. But also, we talk. Maybe a lot. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> you said they're stealing. Last, last year, we had spoke, Randy, I think, also about lockers. Oh yeah, we did, but I don't think that'd be under. Is that going to be? It was. I, I looked one that had like thirty pockets, you know, with combination lock or pad locks. It was like bring six, seven hundred bucks. Yeah. That's oh. kind of, right, but um, yeah, that'll fall under the. She can put like extra money in the miscellaneous line item or something. We had a lot of requests for that last year, oh, so people so. could lock their stuff yeah, up. But um, perfect sense. Is does council want to put? In, I mean, does council want to address anything else with your suggestions with the with the floor with the uh, deep end? And or looking at a slide. Yes, I yeah, we need to know. I mean, I'm not going to give my two cents on the, it. Where would, where would the slide go? First of all, would it be replacing the slide that's there now, or would it be in addition to that? I don't, can I make I don't know if I should ask can who. I, can I, what I, can I? Because we're going to be talking about this again. Mm -hmm. Can I just instruct Howie to go and do some research, get some numbers, get some more data numbers? And then bring it back. We'll talk about this during the 2020 operating work session. Because right now it's just we're talking about stuff we don't have any yeah. really solid updated numbers about for game plan. But just should so but should we have something time. in the CIP to cover that for? Well, we'd have to. Well, once 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 we do the more research and get more updated information. But you want this ready for Monday, correct? Right, I can just leave it as is. Okay. Like I said, once we get it back in there, we're going. We're, this is going to be amended when we do the budget in. Anyway. Right. So I have to amend it. I think the camber should be added to it. Right now, I got the pool maintenance at twenty-five. I got okay. AED, the AED for three thousand. I have pump and related equipment for five, and I have security up at five. Because security camera system, I need to make sure. Pump was pump was at seven. Oh yeah, seven. I didn't change that yet. The mental note. Because Howie said it would probably be yeah. about six to even buy it now. Yeah, and then security. I want to make sure we get enough cameras because some of those they're going to be attached to the building, and they're going to have to zoom into that water. So I need to make sure that whatever camera we actually get is going to be good enough camera they can zoom and still see what's going on on the backdrop of that water. And how's the lighting at the pool? Do you need any more lighting there? Or? The lighting was great. We, we replaced it all this last year. Okay. It was, it was right. good, they did a good job on that. 
And then long term, not for 2020, I, I would recommend we have a parking issue. Oh. We could move the skate park <laughs> and take over the skate park for parking. I would love to move the skate park to one of the tennis courts in Smith Park. The skating park back there is not That's good. Actually, you know, I only see maybe. I've been saying that for three, four years now. Let's do it. The most people I've ever been there is, is like two or three. What, at the skate park? Oh, it, yeah, oh it, it, it's popular. It's very popular. It is but very it popular. needs to be out in the public where there's more eyes on it. That too, and I'd like if you think of where it's at now, it's not walkable to any kid who wants to use the yeah. skate park. They walk clear across town and get to it. Right. Down, know, down. Of course, when I say take put it in tennis courts, I, I don't know if that's what I want to do, but I do have three there, but I also know in the spring a lot of people use those tennis courts. Mm -hmm. They do. You know, but is that something we just add as an it pad and put the thing about? I think it needs to be moved to a more central part of our town. Just well, the access and that creates a domino effect kind of similar with this and that building. If, if you move it, the pool's gotten more popular over the years. It, it's growing some. Mm -hmm. So parking is always a problem. Mm -hmm. So... I was going to say, suggest that the skate park could go in on the wave area at Westlake. At where? At Westlake. Yeah, but we don't own that land. We have to have an agreement with the city. I mean, the school board because of liability. Then we got you guys involved in it. So, I mean, I'm open to the idea as long as it's not. I mean, we're carrying liability insurance. But, but then then but, pops up. But, but you're talking about a city function and a city owned thing that's on property that the city if, don't own. If they have if they decide to sell that land, then we've got to uproot it again and move it. Or we lose it. I would like to see it at Smith Park. I, mean, I, that's yeah. my I was gonna say I I don't see them doing anything. I mean they have absolutely when we ask them, because we want to put an orchard there. Mm -hmm. We don't ever anticipate ever using that piece of land. All right. Will they sell it to you? Donate. But it, as much as get rid of it, donate it. But Randy, what I was thinking is, if you do move that somewhere, whether it's a school or then, wouldn't that in theory couldn't it open up what that current property for more parking? Mm -hmm. Parking's a big issue down there. Oh no, there. no, I was going to say dog park. Oh. We've got a dog park that's going in. Nah. That, parking. Parking. So, okay. Parking would be so, more. Yeah, we could better. take that fence down and make that additional parking for them. Because yeah. don't they park right. across the street now? Yeah, and it's yeah, and, they, the, and the kids are running back and forth or whatever. And, and we don't even know. You that. get the Madison well, Street they, School they, down and you park they, down they there. Say you can yeah. use it as long as you make sure it doesn't get too Yeah. So. You don't think they're already using it for that? I'm surprised you don't. It'll hold it for that. <laughs> she found the agreement to it <laughs> last year at the pool. All right, so again, pool, maintenance and equipment, 25000 83000 pump and related expenses, 7000 security, 5000 Are we all on the same page okay with that? Yeah, I'm on page 12. Page 12? Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> all right, cemetery fund. Any questions or concerns on the cemetery? We have city building repairs, um, 25000 and then 5000 for roadway repair and 7500 for attachments. No. You got something, Mr. Graham? <laughs> uh, I think we got a couple old uh, two sections we haven't got into yet, but don't quote me on that. Yeah, we have a five acre parcel that's kind of behind RD Holder that is we let grow up a little bit that's for future. So up on the hill is what we're filling, and then we have a five acre piece back there that we haven't even touched yet. I, I'd have to give it, Greg. I forget what the uh, official count would be on that, but yeah. We'll catch a deal on one if you want. How do you get a deal for the city? <laughs> <laughs> we'll give you a better deal, but you have to use but it within 24 hours. I'm live for it. Oh, well, good. Good for you. Did you, did you, um, the flooring, does that need to go in there? If you guys. For the for, 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 Huh? No. No, no for the pool. I forgot you, you guys had mentioned oh, yeah, it. No. I, no, yeah, we got to do something there. Um, the, the main walkway to match what you guys put in the bathroom. Do you want me to change the definition to keep it in maintenance part of the 25? Do you want a completely different line item? How much will it cost? I have no idea. He did the bathrooms for. He, quote, he quoted seven and he ended up only doing what for three? Three and some change, I think. Oh, really? Yeah, there was, I think it ended up being a pretty. Yeah. The walkway also goes back to where the people sit to take the. How big is that area back there? Yeah, you think five would go? And then the whole. Based on the problem. So just add 25 yeah. to this, make it 30? 
performing. Yeah, yeah, because he, uh, he he came back at like se- almost yeah. seventy. What I'll do is I'll do it for I'll three thousand. Okay. I was like, wow. What about what about just thirty-five hundred? And then what you can do is get some information on them if we need to change it from yeah, the actual sure. operating budget. We'll put it in. <laughs> so new flooring. Would that just be under the pool maintenance, and, or would it be a separate line a line item? I think it should be a separate line item. But I also think, too, at some point in time, that we need to go back and take some out of pool. Maintenance. And you said you were going to do, what, 35? I think 3, 5 000. would probably be better 3, just 000. to be on the safe side. 5? Yeah. Okay. I mean, so my opinion. Okay that, I'm not going to use it. Maybe this. And, and again, all this, these numbers will all be changed next year anyhow. OK, right. so back to the pool maintenance. You guys want to keep the 25000 in there, because there's been a lot yeah. added to the pool. We've just added. You're up to 40. We just added five, ten. Forty-five. That's out of twenty thousand dollars. Well, I say just, I mean, leave it because depending on what he finds out as far as how he wants to approach some of the leaks, and if you know, and what other things, I mean, it's gonna, like I said, it'll get changed again anyway. So. Rather have it, not need it, to need it, not have it. I'm good with that. Any questions on the cemetery? All right, well, page 13. Is the, is the <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I have one more thing before we go. Um, I got an email from the auditors. We have to set up our exit conference, and that is when we did at the House um, last year, similar to what we did previously. Um, so um, they have some available dates. This is going to require uh, you guys to let me know what's best for everyone. It's not mandatory for council to be there. Uh, but I do need to make the effort to let you guys be there. I mean, it's only for uh, counts of the current people that are being sent. Exit time for today. It's for our yearly audit that we do. So they'll go and the auditor will we'll update council what the fine is for. Yep. Um, which is all made public after the fact. Um, so uh, 18th during the day. What day is that? That's a Monday. You have the 18th day. Of, 19th day the Monday. of, of this month. What time? Oh, this month. It's, it's open. So like 2 o'clock? Yep. Whatever's best for everyone. We have a council meeting that night, too, right? We do have a council meeting that night. And a work session. Work <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. 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 I mean, if it, the sooner the better, I can make whatever you think. You can do You can get all knocked out on the 18th, and you can do the 19th, or you have the morning of the 20th. I'm fine with the 18th. I mean, yeah, Monday will be fine. I'm just getting cranky. So what time do you want to do? It's up to you guys. It's really up for every one of those. How long will it take, you think? It's usually an hour. An hour? An hour to an hour, is that? Two o'clock? I think like it's really good. Give me two numbers. Give me one o'clock and two o'clock. One and 105. There you go. <laughs> 106. Be generous. During the day, they can come, or if maybe they could come right before our work session, so you're just coming in. Because I already asked that, and they don't want to. They, that's oh, they said no. Present. They wouldn't. Yeah, okay, they, they would wouldn't say come two? before that. Yeah, yeah two. Yeah. Two bills. I think you tried. I'd prefer that. Wednesday, but I can shoot for Monday. What I mean, Peg? I'm not saying they didn't know. They just didn't. I'm open. Oh, yeah. Well, Amy? Monday's fine. Mr. Cobb, I would any that. day you prefer? Right now, it doesn't matter. Monday. Okay. So Maybe. 18, at what time? The majority two. says 18, so. Okay. 2 o'clock. 2 o'clock sounds Everybody good. good with 2, Mike? Yeah. I'm, Can you okay. be there? No, I'll be Let right. me have a backup on the 19th, just in case something happens with their scheduling and they can't do it. Do two, it. 2 o'clock, two o'clock on, on the 19th. 19th. On the 19th is fine too. What's that? Yeah. 2 o'clock on the 19th. 2 o'clock on the 19th for a backup. Okay. 19th is 2. Okay. Yeah. Uh, when I communicate with them, I'll shoot the email out to everyone. <laughs> Whoop. I can't do that. You can't do what, 18th or 19th? 19th. I'm, I got an eye doctor appointment. Sorry about that. Okay. <laughs> That's all right. I don't need to be I'm there. sure the 18th will be fine. All right. Anything else, Mr. Bridge? No, I'm good. Admin side, Mr. Kitko, Mr. Watson, Chief. All right. I can't um, believe Ms. Watson has nothing to say after what we did to the CIP. Executive session none, adjournment. This isn't oh, my turn. This isn't say. my Believe turn. At the she's next session is my turn. <laughs> she's got something to say. Anyone? Like As it. she should, she is your final. Oh, move to adjourn. Sorry. So, need uh, a second somewhere. Okay, second. second. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Do we need to do a motion to yes. Mr. Shammy? For what? Oh. To excuse Mr. Shammy. I make a motion to excuse Mr. Shannon. Second. Uh, First by Ms. Hopkins, second by Mr. Lindsay. 
workstation, you don't know mandatory. Okay, so I just got to do that for the council yeah. of You can't. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. Yes. We can't vote in a work session. Yes, work. This is a work session is a same thing as a regular meeting. It just has a different title and it's public advertised. So we can't. Correct. Uh, I looked at that today. Yes, we researched, well, we it, searched yes. it today. Today. Just to make yes. sure. <laughs> Did you call her? Yeah, I started with Councilwoman Nagel. I said does yes. Do I need to go this way since she was a second, or does it not matter? It don't matter. Okay. Uh, yes. Councilwoman Hawk. Yes. <coughs> when are we voting on? Oh, oh, oh. Well, we had some um, huge discussion. Yes. Uh, Vice uh, Mayor, Mayor Lowry. Lowry. <laughs> Vice Mayor Lowry. Yes. 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 Councilman Cook. Oh. Yes. Councilman Cook. Yes. Over there? Okay. All excuse. And, and before we finish, Casey, you did an excellent job this evening. We appreciate your yeah, efforts. Yeah, fantastic skill set. We didn't get him a high stool to sit on. So he didn't say a word. Don't tell him. He's young. He now that don't get you a raise. <laughs> All right. One more time. <laughs> Move to adjourn. Okay. So the second. adjournment is Lindsay, second by um, Eggleston. <laughs> okay.